Hello everyone, it has been a year since the last one of these, probably longer because I'm pretty bad at schedules, but Planet Cast is back. Everybody cheer. Hey. I'm glad that one that? person, I was hoping for actual silence there, but I mean, you know what? That works. <laughs> one cheer in the crowd works. I am part of everyone, okay? No, you are. I mean, I've known Sam for a while now and he's never, and he's always failed to, he's always managed to disappoint me, so why should you be any different? <laughs> <laughs> so with us today we have me yuki the person who's hosting this we have train hi we have sam yo and we have josh hello okay well that that's introductions out of the way uh what the podcast is if the title wasn't obvious enough our top 10 favorite games from 2018 uh we do this every year since 2016 i think yes oh, the first one was 2015 it might no, have been but i think it was 2016 no, I'm pretty okay. sure we've only, I'm pretty sure we've only done two. Yeah, I think we've only done two before this. Fair enough. That it's right. the that first one sense. where it's just us four. Yeah. It is, yes. Because well, the first one we had Reese and not Josh. Me. The second one we had Josh and Declan. Now now we have the true four. The the the, the, yes. the stream team. The ones that people actually give a shit about their opinions. <laughs> well, maybe if Reese didn't fucking put No Man's Sky and Pokemon Go on his list just <laughs> not for being good games but for completely superfluous reasons yeah that's I totally mean, fair it's his, it's his list he's allowed he might be allowed and make it right alright so I guess we'll go in the order of the reverse order that I just introduced everyone because I think that's the order we went last year I don't remember I think so so it'll be Josh then Train then myself then Yuki uh, all that um, way that works too I mean you two can choose which way you're going that that was the reverse order of the way you said our names. No, so. it was not. <laughs> I said train first because I'm looking at the Discord order and I just went back. <laughs> okay, right. I'm number one. Okay, yeah, I'll we'll mean, do it that way. Whatever, yeah. it's fine. Either way, we're going to start with our number 10s. We're going to work up to number one. And then at the end of it, we'll do like a top five overall, I guess, where we like sort of tally up the points and see together what our top five is. I'm pretty oh, sure right. I know what at least two of those five are, like instantly. Mm-hmm. Probably All three. Right have to go and open a thing to keep track of the points. Yes, oh, yes if you could do that, that would be great. So, Josh, if you would like to start with your number 10. Uh, for my number 10, I'm going to go with Onrush. Onrush? Onrush? Yes. Never even heard of um, it. It's a, it's, uh, it's a driving game, but the aim of the game isn't to win a race, it's to destroy your other team's, uh, the other team's cars, so you're two teams of six and you must destroy the other team's cars and you have different game modes so it's kind of like a demolition derby thing sort of yeah but you do have different win conditions but coming first because it's not a race it's just yeah destroy as you're going through but you've got different like go through the gates as fast as you can get into a certain place as fast as you can sounds, sounds a lot like uh, cell damage from back in the day I never played that. I don't think any of you did. <laughs> it was uh, it was one of uh, the PSN free games, and honestly, I'm glad I managed to get it. I've, I've had cell damage. Does that count? <laughs> <laughs> and to be fair, on its own, it wasn't spectacular, but with friends and other things, it was really fun. Fair enough. Cool. I'll have to give it a look. Yeah, it's really fun. Cool. So, Sam? Yep, right. It's me next. Uh, my number 10 is Assassin's Creed Odyssey. Um, mm. I like this one because it really represents a lot of refinement in the way of this series. Origins was a good like testing bowl for the, the new formula they're going with. This one ironed out a lot of the kicks. Um, it goes very hard on the historical tourism stuff, which I love. Um the, they actually really overhauled the combat as well. Um, mm, I, yeah. I, yeah um, the sort of being able to use abilities quickly and on the fly. Uh, your various skill trees. Um, I'm mixed on those. It feels like... I mean, yes, they're going to be unbalanced because, yes, of course, being one thing is better than the other. But what, when I put all my time into a certain skill and that certain skill is not even good in the terms of, like... I focus on sneaking around and stabbing people in Assassin's Creed, right? Yeah. You fool. Yes, I, I'm apparently a fool, because I can only do that to people who I am already stronger than. And if I can take someone in a straight-up fight, why would I sneak around and assassinate? Yeah. But yeah. that and this game feels padded as hell. Like, there's a lot to do here. 
so much shit to do. Loads to explore. The Greek islands are fucking beautiful. Sailing around and doing, like, neo-medieval piracy is great, and it's all fun, but there's just so much shit to slog through. It's... It's a real mixed bag, which is why it's this low. But I did have a hell of a time, and Cassandra is an absolute darling of a character. Yeah, cool. Alright, Drain? Oh, uh, I have uh, Stitch One Story Cyberstove as my number... Uh, Hacker's Memory as my number 10. Uh, uh, sequel to the game I talked about uh, in 2016, I think it was my number 3. It was, yeah. So, I mean... Well, I still enjoy the game. The gameplay is still the same, and it's like better because there's more variety. I uh, the story just kind of left me feeling like this was largely pointless and nothing really mattered because well, I already knew how it because it takes place during the events of the first game. So yeah, like, yeah, you get you get like scenes of what you were doing in the other game as you go through it. But then it gets to like, well, then the big final thing happens, the big sort of end game happens. It's like, why well, do you know how this ends? And I know that nothing I do actually matters, so. Yeah. It left me. It was, as I said, it was a good game, but by virtue of uh, the, but by virtue of how it was structured in comparison to the other one, made me just. I don't know. I had the stakes weren't there for me, so that's why it's as low down as it is. That's fair. Fair point. It doesn't seem like it didn't really grow much from the old game. Uh, as I said, it's mostly just in terms of. Uh, greater variety in terms of what you can summon and mess around with, and I appreciated some things being slightly more rebalanced. Mm. It just kind of, yeah, you you reach a certain point where it's like I had a bit more fun playing the last game, even if that had technically less content. Yeah, that's totally yeah. fair. Yeah, I get that. All right, well, for uh, my number ten, I had a choice of two games that last second I decided to scrap and not talk about either of them. Um, so right. I was going to talk about like, what I just go I had like Dolan Cart that free to play mobile game that was on there and I was like yeah it's it was okay and then it became bad because they filled it with microtransactions and then I thought I could talk about the Fortnite Battle Pass and it's like well nothing's changed in Fortnite it's, well, I mean it's, lots changed they keep adding to it which is nice but there's nothing to talk about and then I yeah. thought instead actually I want to talk about Fire Emblem Heroes again even though I talked about it last year uh, because last well, year it came out obviously but this year They've been piling it with updates all year, constantly, much like Fortnite. But um, it's fun because it's it's given Wait, me a so chance to play add... all the Fire Emblem stuff that I've never experienced from all the previous games. You know, meeting all the characters and whatnot, uh, learning about their backstories and stuff. And there's a lot of characters in Fire Emblem. I don't know if you know this. There's probably about as many as there are Pokemon. Uh, oh yeah. So it's it's great getting to know all these characters that I've. You know, in this series that I'm really getting into, even though I've technically only played three games from it, and two of them are the same game, just a different story. <laughs> yep. I, mean, I mean, that's just Sam and Resident Evil, so... Yeah, Sam, have still... you played two games in Resident Evil? Not even that. Yep, didn't think so. <laughs> I'm pretty sure you I... played Umbrella Chronicles and that's it, right? Uh, Dark Side Chronicles. Please. Oh, that's close enough. <laughs> and you became a fan um, of that? Yeah, yeah. I've, I've written Resident Evil fan fiction based off of that. Yeah, yeah, Josh. Yeah. Josh, you, you that see that one, though. Yeah, no, Josh, don't even question it. You see what I deal with. <laughs> right. It's not part of your fucking contract, mate. <laughs> I mean, it kind of... It's my shtick, though. Yeah. I'm not one who gets mad at you. <laughs> yeah, other right. people do, then, I've, then like, my position as top dog starts being... Uh, starts, like, losing in some of its cement. Fair enough. Well, I didn't really have too much more to say that was any more interesting than that. I just really like Fire Emblem. I like the characters in it, and I'm glad they keep updating the game, and it doesn't like require any microtransactions at all. I've never spent a penny on this game, and I've enjoyed it more than pretty much every other mobile game, except for maybe one that'll be later on the list. Ooh. Oh, shit. Number nines, please. Josh. Number nines, Josh. Okay, so my number nine, uh, I'm going to go with Kingdom Come Deliverance. Okay. All right. I've heard of it. Right, okay. So this game should be in my top three. Right. It should be. The characters are really nice. The game looks beautiful. There's so much to do. It feels so realistic. The realism is fantastic. Like, you know, it actually... If you haven't watched, uh, certain characters will react differently to you. 
Um, Little details. Yeah, and the, everything like that. And it's really good until, you know, there's just one tiny, huge thing that lets it down, and that's its combat system. Oh, I've heard, I've heard of that. Yeah. Uh, it, it ruins it completely. Mm. That, See, this those... is such a good game, but the combat is terrible. And the thing is that it would be fine if you could continue on as most RPGs, where you can play as like a non-combat role. For instance, yeah, like, like, there's like several... support, um, yeah. You know, far yeah. away, yeah, that sort of thing. Uh, and it's allowing you to do that until you get to a certain point where you have to fight someone. Oh shit. Yeah, and it's just like, yeah, fuck you. So I went back, so, and then I learned all the stuff that you need to do to win, and then it becomes easy as hell. And once you learn one specific move, it becomes easy as hell, you can just bum rush the game. Yeah, I, I had heard the complaints about the combat from a couple of the reviewers I watched, that's why I was very surprised to see it, see it made the list. I've heard, like, a lot of great things about it, too, just not about the combat. Yeah, it's, like, if it weren't for the combat, this this game would be in my top... It probably would be my number one. The general, cons yeah. the general consensus from reviewers I heard was 7.5 out of 10, not enough black people. <laughs> I'm only slightly, I'm only slightly, slightly joking. No, no, no. There were quite no, a few no. people saying about women, uh, not having women in there, you know, the time when, you know, a woman would be I mean, We could get into this whole thing and that's not really relevant at the time. Yeah, yeah, I just, anyway. I just yeah. wanted to make a joke. Yeah. <laughs> cool. Well then. Sam? Right. My number nine, uh, Dragon Ball Fighters. Uh, Huh. I, yeah, I yeah, I forgot this came out this year until I had to think about this. I'm just actually surprised you played it. Yeah, yeah. Well, it came out. It came out on Switch in like uh, September, October. Oh, oh yeah, yeah, yeah. And I thought I said to myself when it came out, I'd give it a try. Um, plus, it also came with uh, Dragon Ball uh, Super Butoden, an old NES game, which I hear is great, but I can't play it. Anyway, um, I didn't actually expect to like this um, because I'm in fight in fighting games where it's much more faster and eclectic, like uh, UMVC three, uh, Blaze Blue, Persona Four Arena. I'm not. I don't gel really well with that kind of fighter. Um, this one, with the addition of stuff like an auto combo system, actually like really well spaced tutorials throughout its both its story mode and its own tutorial mode. Um, it teaches you how to fight it and how to play it better, way, way better than any of the other games I just listed. Um, Extremely amount. I sucked at those games. I I thought this was just going to be a disaster, but like fighting in it is so much fun. The the uh, I mean I'm I'm kind of mixed on the story mode. I'm glad it's there. It does, has a bit of fun with itself, but it's nothing. It's nothing I've really lost. Um, being able to fight in like you know, sort of building your combos as it is, learning what connects to what, super super rewarding when. You know, you actually know what you're doing. Um, they've got various amounts of different skills and gimmicks that pretty much every different, every single different character has, and that's a rare thing for Dragon Ball games. And then learning none of it matters because Perfect Cell exists. <laughs> uh, yeah, no, Perfect Cell got his ass nerfed by the time it came out on the Switch. Uh, um, yeah, I, I, I know, I know. Um, one, I think Videl is like now the new OP cancer please nerf character. I haven't actually, I haven't actually gotten Duran and Videl yet. But again, I'm also happy that this game has a season two, like, um, of characters. Like, I, I like they're realizing, hey, a season pass that implies that there'll be more, right? Right? And no one doing it. So, big ups on that. Problem is, it is still that kind of very fast-paced fighting game that I don't gel well with. And despite all of this, I'm not good at it. And when I'm not good at it, it hampers my enjoyment. I still appreciate it. This is a fantastically constructed, beautiful fucking game. It is just not made for someone like me, who's used to a bit more slower-paced fighters. That said, really loved it. Want to see more. Cool. All right. And Train. Uh, I was number nine. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Uh, Spyro Reignited. There okay. it is. <clears throat> uh, so I uh, had the uh, OG trilogy way back when I was just a wee lad, and I had the handy little PlayStation. I remember the days back when Spyro 2 was called uh, Gateway to Glimmer. Good times. No. Before they changed it to Ripto's Rage because that's what its actual name is. 
But yeah, I do think the Reignited Trilogy was uh, extremely good, like, red or uh, replication of the classic games. Uh, the only thing I didn't care for it is I didn't really care for the way Spyro was presented in or like sort of the new age really kind of uh more child friendly spire i liked him when he had a bit more edge to him where he came yeah. off as more of a douchebag <laughs> yeah he did he did yeah and it's like i like tom kenny uh but eh, he didn't really do it for me it, it was so, a, bit, a bit toothless really. in the in the back of my mind it was always that whole thing of it's like it's just it's like those games i used to i loved all those years ago just not quite what i not quite as good as i remember in like sort of more less tangible ways if that makes sense yeah Yeah, no that makes sense also some elements to like the character designs didn't mesh well with me didn't really like hunter's design his design was terrible yeah a lot of the kind of characters had that, and there was just a lot of missing like voices that I was like, "That's not what they sound like." <laughs> so that's, yeah, that's fair. That's understandable. Well, my number nine, uh, Pokemon Let's Go Pikachu. Shouldn't uh, be too much of a surprise that it's this low down. Um, yeah, music's great. Uh, the game looks beautiful. Uh, I love everything aesthetically about it. And I enjoyed playing it alongside Sam and on the stream. And that's my list of things I liked about it. <laughs> <laughs> oh, boy. Um, I mean, it's not... I don't have a huge list of things I disliked about it. In fact, I don't think I have anything I disliked about it. It's the problem that it's just sort of there, you know? It's one of those yeah. things where it's like, I'm glad I played it. And I'll probably never go back and play it again. It's just, I've happened. It was an experience I had. It looked nice. And... And then you're done, you know? I think we Just, have visited Kanto maybe a bit too much. If we're going to go back there, which I have no problem with, we need an actual story, not just, it's red and blue again. Yeah. Look at how much red and blue this is. Now you don't have to fight wild Pokemon, though. Okay. I have no problem with that, but... Just a new game, maybe? Yeah. I guess we'll see what this year holds. <laughs> yeah. uh, Josh, time. number eight, please. <laughs> Uh, number eight, I'm gonna go for Digimon Story, Cyber Sleuth Hackers. Oh. Again, everything pretty much what I said, except it was just the same game again, and it just felt a bit more disappointing. Like I knew what was gonna happen. There was no, it just felt like Cyber Sleuth another one. Yeah. And so... it was more disappointing because I wanted a sequel rather than just oh. Here's another one. Hopefully, this will sell money. Yeah, here's the side story. But those characters who you never even met or cared about or had any connection yeah. to, and as I said, his entire like sort of end game is already spoiled in how it ends because the yeah. first game happened. Glad I've never played yeah, that yeah. one. I haven't played the first one yet either yet, but you know, <laughs> uh, it's still enjoyable. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like it's just that really good RPGs. But just hit. Yeah, I, I will play by, the first one eventually, and then I'll probably. It's leave hindered it by the first one existing, yeah. which feels bizarre to say, but yeah, right. Uh, well, yeah, basically, yeah. Fair enough. That's it. Uh, Sam, cool. number eight. Number eight for me is the Spyro Reignited trilogy. Um, you know, three games in one, an amazing little blast from the past. Unlike Train, I actually really liked all of the aesthetics. Like the aesthetic change for me didn't really pull me out of it. Like maybe it's been long enough since I played it. Um, although, but I'm, I must play the original trilogy when I was like 11, 12. It was later than when it came out. But um, I know I just thought everything that everything new that came to it, aside from the way more toothless Spyro. Um, I don't know. I just really I. I just really liked it. I, th- I think the- I think nostalgia goggles hit me a lot on this one, which is why I've put it down this low. Um, but I had all the fun I had with the old games, and it-, it-, it builds in a few anti-frustration features, which is always great, because games in those days were really frustrating, and no one likes acknowledging it. Yeah. yeah. So I-, I like the fact that I can click in the stick and Sparks will show me in which sort of direction I need to go to get that last fucking gem that's keeping me from 100%. Because I like that shit. Fun fact, I didn't even know that was a feature until the third game, and I 
did the thing that gets you that ability anyway, and I was like, where the fuck's my ability? <laughs> oh. And and it's fact, like, oh, I, already... I didn't even know it was in the uh, in the original third game, because I did it as a kid and never used it once. I mean, okay, so maybe I'm just worse than you guys. But, like... <laughs> <laughs> no, I definitely needed it in this one. I'll, I'll take I, that. Yeah. I would have just, I managed to get through the first two games, just wish I'd have known about it beforehand. Yeah. Yeah. When yeah. I've, I, I mean, go for, like the max percentages. Yeah, I've been trying to go for max percentage, like, just every so often. And it says something about this game that I enjoy doing that. There's not a lot of games I really like going deep in on that for. Yeah. But the nostalgia is carrying me through. The style is adorable and fun. It's just, it. That's, that's it. It's crystalline, nostalgic fun. And that's just nice. Yeah. That's really all I gotta say on it. Fair enough. Train, number eight. Oh, okay, so here's a game that I am um, no no one will ever no one here has ever even heard of. Uh, Override Mech City Brawl. I've heard of it. I haven't. Oh, impressive. It's this like Oh it's a PlayStation it's I got it on PlayStation, but I'm pretty sure it's on every format. It's a kind of like It is. Uh well it's like I guess Smash Bros, but with giant robots instead sort of thing in that it's a more kind of are but I guess it's more arena based uh, fighting. I yeah. just really like the aesthetics to it. I really like the uh little references here and there. Uh I like uh just the general oh. gameplay. For how little it for how much overall it cost it was a extremely like fun time to be had and I'm pretty sure they're still adding content to it. Yeah yeah the game started out at like thirty quid and within a couple of weeks it dropped down to sort of twenty fifteen. Yeah so I keep What's this? This, uh mech mech uh override mech city brawl. Alright. So yeah. It is fun and I admittedly have a <laughs> bias because I like big robots that destroy cities. Yeah fair. But yeah. All I right. would recommend it if anyone is interested. I was thinking about picking it up for PS4. Like that'll be, that'll be a thing to think about. Fair enough then. Right, why number eight is the uh, aforementioned mobile game that I uh, pre-alluded to, uh, Sega Heroes. Now I've got to be honest, this was actually going to be like way up the list, which I know it's unusual for a free-to-play mobile game, but Not I don't think you. I've ever no. played a mobile game I enjoy quite as much as this one. <laughs> Um, it's a basic general concept of it's like a puzzle game with RPG elements. You know how they work by now. It's the same as Puzzle and Dragons and uh, Puzzle Quest, all those sort of games. Except for the way you fight in this one, you have different Sega characters from fucking who knows what Sega game. Like every Sega game you can think of, which admittedly isn't many. But they keep adding new characters from all the games that haven't got representation yet. They always try to add four characters from each game actually, which is quite interesting. Because I didn't know some of these games had four characters. <laughs> We've just had the Crazy Taxi 4 And I was like, Crazy Taxi has Four characters? Crazy Taxi has characters? Yeah, well I knew it had like one <laughs> Like the guy who drives the taxi Apparently there are multiple different people Who drive the taxis Yeah, I think you could select them in like The console versions I had no idea <laughs> We've just got to House of the Dead And I'm looking forward to seeing what four Actual human characters they're going to give us That aren't just a zombie I mean, there's like human characters in every house of a Zed game. Yeah, I guess there are, but I just thought it was the same two people co oping through the whole game. So. He's he's definitely not House of the Dead, but if they ever add Sega Tars, I'm sure. I mean, they might do. I, I don't know how far they're going to go. Uh, the other reason it's down so low is because the microtransactions in this game are, without a doubt, the single scummiest microtransactions I've ever seen in any video game. Uh, to buy a single legendary character, it would cost you well over a hundred quid. Jeez. Fucking hell! It's um... ridiculous. And like, obviously, I'm not spending a penny on it. I don't give a shit. I managed to accidentally spend uh, two thousand gems on the game, which is like the the in-game, you know, like the paid-for currency, but you can earn it, you know, very slowly. Uh, because I accidentally clicked the screen one too many times when accepting a free chest, and they decided to put the most expensive items. Directly under the accept a free item button. Oh, yeah. That which is a dick move! <laughs> and I tried to contact them and get it back, and they were like, oh, yeah, we can give you your gems back. And I was like, oh, cool. By resetting the entire account, and you won't get anything else back that you earned. <laughs> yeah, sounds about right. Yeah. So, yeah. Cool. Uh, th that single interaction, uh, well, that and the shitty microtransactions, uh, I definitely was put it down this low because I I keep playing every day still. Uh, I really enjoy it. They're constantly having new events and stuff. 
the way that the auto battling works in this game is you can just instead of auto battling through a level like you would like an auto duel in Duel Links, it would just you click it and it's like yes you've done the level, but you can only do it on a level you've already done. So you have to beat every level yourself first in every type of game mode, which I think is the best way to do it, to be honest. And it's like you want to rebeat it for the rewards, sure, why not? You know, which is yeah, I think I think that's honestly the best way auto duels should work. Obviously, you can't really do that with Duel Links. Bad example, but you know what I mean. Um, yeah, yeah, I don't really have too much about to say. It's a fun game. Just don't give them your money. They don't deserve it because they're really <laughs> shitty with that. Get this game. Just don't give them money. Yep, pretty much. <laughs> that's what, that's just that's that's how I roll. <laughs> Josh, on to number seven, please. Uh, I'm gonna go for Assassin's Creed Odyssey. Cool. Hey. Uh, basically, hey Ben, exact same as uh, uh, what Sam said, but pretty much uh, I'm. More the opposite. Like he didn't like how this series. He said that he like the series is progressing. No, I, 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 I said this was a a big improvement over the things that started in Origins. Oh no, right, yeah, but like you know, so I'm really enjoying the fact that it's starting to. You can tell they're trying to go over to an RPG. Yeah, they are. They definitely are. But like, but there are still obviously some issues with that. Oh, yeah. Like, some of your choices just do not matter. Like, one little bit. Yeah, it sounds, mean, like, sounds like most RPGs. Yeah, I, uh, My issue was less with the choices and more the fact that, like, you have to keep doing busy work to stay, like, relevant in power. If you oh, level yeah. up, yes, also, you, like, you, know, you know, oh, uh, let's uh, win this island for the uh, uh, Spartans. But you're allowed in Athens. Yeah, yeah. Well, you're, yeah. It's like, you know, if you helped, like, you know, because you become quite well-known between the two armies, I've got a feeling you wouldn't be able to crisscross all the time. Yeah, yeah, you can just switch whichever army you're helping in whatever region, and it... Yeah, it just felt a bit... That's hmm, weird. I don't think so. Hmm. But yeah, other than that, I quite enjoyed it. I enjoyed the uh, combat. Uh... But you could tell that they slowed down some of the level, um... The level progression, uh, yeah. Yeah, the level progression in order to, um, prioritise, uh, microtransactions. Yeah. I sense a running theme. There's a word I don't like that keeps appearing. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Oh dear. But, other than that, but you don't need them. You don't need them, it just saves you a lot of padding and busy work. But again, I, I, I can put on a uh, good... Um, what a horrifying world we live in, yeah. where pl where content is now c in giving any games is considered panic and busy work. <laughs> you, have to, <laughs> right. you have to pay to reduce the time you spend on a game. <laughs> uh, there's a difference between content and level grinding, mate. I'm aware. Yeah. Well, I, I do appreciate what, the joke. What a horrible world we live in. Yeah. Right. Yeah, but, oh. yeah, right. Me at number seven. Right. Okay. I have a feeling you guys might not like me after this. I mean... I think I, I know what's you, coming, so I it's fine. I doubt this will change my opinion on you. Number seven for me is Super Smash Bros. Ultimate. Yeah, I'm not surprised. Yeah. Um, I have a horrible feeling I've placed the lowest out of any of us, so I'm just going to get out of the way. The game is amazing. It is a load of fun. The roster of characters is incredible. The variety of game modes is incredibly huge, even for single-player-only peons like me. There's a lot of attention to detail and stuff like World of Light, of how characters fight, the delving into the history of various Nintendo games and non-Nintendo games. Um, every character's got a unique path in classic mode that alludes to their own history in their games. In some cases, like Street Fighter guys, it works exactly like their games. There's a lot of really in-depth detail here, and I don't want to take away from the fact that I have a lot of fun with this game. I also have a lot of really big fucking problems with it. Unlocking characters is a fucking drag. It's not that bad when it, we've had previous Smash Brothers, where there's been sort of you start with a reasonable sized roster, but when you start with eight and you're unlocking nearly ten times that amount of the roster, it just gets dull. When you just want to get to someone mm -hmm. who, you, who you want to play as and just practice with them a bit and know that you like them, you don't want to spend ten, twenty hours grinding through the game to unlock a character and find out, oh wait, I suck. Um, World of Light, for all that it goes really in-depth on the character history, I hated it. Such a disappointment, because there's no character interaction. That's the one thing everybody wants out of crossovers. You know, I want to see how Pit and Palutena deal with Bayonetta hating their fucking guts. 
Um, I want to see Snake fight <laughs> Meta Ridley like he's trying to take down a Metal Gear. Or like Cloud and Fire and the Fire Emblem guys rip down Dracula's hordes, just look at each other and think, huh. You know, just shit like that. There's a lot of potential here, and it's entirely squandered. Um, and it's just, and it's an entire mode of busy work. The busy work is fine when you actually earn stuff from it, but when it's just like collecting spirits, which it's not unfun, but it just doesn't feel rewarding in any way. It feels um, like a real grind going through World of Light. It does. And, like, I, I, I hate not liking it because there's so much potential here and I wanted more from it. And I guess I can't hate a game for what it's not, but at the same time, like, seven cutscenes in a campaign that takes easily, like, six, seven hours. Mm. There are it seven cutscenes? Might even be less. I thought there was just like, one. All right, well, no spoil the rest of those six cutscenes for <laughs> I won't, but it'll be hard not to. Like, but even even with my points against, it is still ridiculously fun. I've had so much fun with this game on my own and fighting against you guys. I don't want that to like. I don't want it to for its position to be so low to imply that it's a bad game. It's not. I just have a lot of problems with I mean, it. And you clearly talked really highly about the free games before it. So. Oh yeah, yeah. I I I I loved every single game. But I just yeah. I know it's probably the lowest that any of you have placed it. I just wanted to okay. go right ahead. Trent? Uh, number seven is Soul Calibur Six for me. Cool. Uh, well, I've been a fan of the Soul Calibur series for a while. Uh, when Five came out, and it's like, and yeah. <laughs> Everything uh, changed when Soul Calibur Five came out. Well, I didn't even hate Five, it just didn't have a strong enough opinion on it. Like, well, clearly, it was rushed out. So, when you got six, the did the thing I generally dislike, which is reset the status quo. Uh, bank on the fact that people played the last get those games in the past, like Mortal Kombat Nine thing. I guess it's the most uh, obvious example I can give. Yeah, that's fair. But yeah, I really like a lot of the gameplay overhauls to this uh iteration i uh really like the character creation still although i'm pretty sure it's um, although i actually you thinking on it i'm pretty sure it's just it's uh version it's just like force only without quite as much of the content force had yeah um, it's pretty much copy paste from five they've just altered uh, the way you can place a few things yeah but gra graph pick like, it's like a massive step up obviously mm. uh only downside apart Thing. The reason why it's so low is just because of things like Tira being put in as paid DLC, uh, mainstay of the series at this point, and just the general sense of, yeah, a lot the character creator is like missing a whole bunch of items that were in past iterations that feel like they're just going to be locked behind paywalls for the season pass. Yeah. Very, very, very fair point. So, it's that thing where it's like, I appreciate all of the content we have, but I can... Mate, it's more than fair to say that a lot that the content we don't have is just being held for greedy reasons. Yeah, it's totally fair. Oh, damn it, Bamco. Yeah. I mean, damn the games industry. Yeah, isn't this just a running theme? It's the, <clears throat> man, this game would be great if you didn't if you weren't an end expected to pay even more money on top of purchasing the game to keep to improve your experience. Yeah, that's very true. Well. My number seven is Soul Calibur Six. <laughs> oh shit! <laughs> that makes it a lot easier for me to keep track of points. It really does. Uh, so those things that Train was saying, I was a big fan of Soul Calibur series, and then Soul Calibur Five happened. <laughs> hey! <laughs> I just thought, okay, he could just say this bit for me. I mean, the only <laughs> thing I really have to add to what Train was saying was um, I enjoyed how they did the story mode. Um, I know they've done it better in previous games, and pretty much all of them. Well, not five. We pretend that one doesn't exist. I know they've done it better in the previous ones, but I personally did really enjoy how they like laid out the timeline. But this is when this character was doing these things. I I, yeah. I like that. That was that was a nice little touch. I haven't played for it all, but yeah. when do I ever? Um, <laughs> also, I was just happy to see Talon and any other characters that I can physically play back. I feel like I can play more characters in this game than I could in previous ones as well, which is nice. I don't know if they've made them easier to play or easier to understand or something, but... When I got to five, I just couldn't do anything with anyone, really, and that kind of sucked. Um, yeah, it's nice to be able to play it. Uh, Skull Servants, so that becomes... Oh, yeah, also, I mean, the Skull Servants in the game, so he's the strongest character of all. 
Well, yeah, obviously. He destroyed Sam. Like, I mean, it, Soul Calibur Six is Josh's number one game, even though he doesn't have it, just because Skull 7. <laughs> 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 yeah, I don't have anything much more to add to, to what Trayden said. The game looks amazing. I hate that all the DLC is a thing, because the way they've done it is really scummy. And mm. let's move on to the num- actual number sixes that don't have Soul Calibur in front of it. Unless they do, in Sam's case. We'll find out. <laughs> Josh? Uh, I'm starting to uh, get annoyed that I put On Rush last. Just because... Well, actually, no, I'm glad. Because if it went for uh, On Rush... Uh, no, yeah, no, I'm actually annoyed. Because I'd be saying good things about the games, except Stan saying them all, because I'm going to go for Super Smash Brothers. <laughs> Woo! <laughs> yeah, so I'd be saying the all in front of Sam's and actually saying good things rather than having to add my own little, um, like, nitpicks. Yeah, I mean, well. there's, only so, there's only so many ways that we as a group can say that this game is awesome. Yeah, but uh, for me, one of the issues is that when playing solo, like, I, I do feel an absolute... Why were spirits there? I felt like spirits were just there to add on to World of Light. Yeah. That, that's the only reason they were there. They were not needed, which meant World of Light was not needed. Like, and playing it just felt like an absolute chore. Unlocking characters was a chore. But, again, when I'm playing with you guys, it's extremely fun. Mm. But playing it on my own, I'm not having as much fun. Fair. That's an entirely fair point. And it's just that mm, I, I don't really play it as much without you guys. I don't yeah. play it at all without you guys. Uh, so. <laughs> hardly when I am playing, but when I am playing on uh, you guys or even online, it does feel fun. It feels really, really fun, and that's why it's higher now. Yeah. Fair enough. If it, if it weren't for me having such fun playing it with you guys, it would be so much lower. My Probably wouldn't, wouldn't even be on your list. Honest. Yeah, and that's the entire reason why Fortnite made so many of our lists. Like- yeah, honestly, yeah. I mean, no, we all played that single player that we've forgotten about. <laughs> I mean, it didn't make my list. Well, no, it didn't. True. So sad. Cool. Number six. <coughs> right, my number six. Uh, Pokemon Let's Go Eevee. Hey. Um, we we are we counting this the same as Let's Go Pikachu for the sake of the scores? For the points, I yeah. Am. For the points, right? Okay. Um, for the yeah. Put this above Smash is a little controversial, um, yeah. but really there's not much in between it. Um, you know, it, it, in the grand scheme of things. Um, I really... I, I like this different approach that the Let's Go things have gone with. Um, uh, they've... Uh, they've oh. Oh, hold up, hold up a sec, Sam. The call's cutting out and you, I'm getting none of this. Oh, and Josh has dropped. I'm going to... Oh, everyone's dropping. I'll leave and join again. Oh, Hello? Okay. Yeah, okay. Right. There we go. All right, so right. Pog- Pogba, let's go, Evie. That's what you were talking about. Let's go. Uh, yeah, yeah. How far did I get into my thing before? Uh, just just start again. <laughs> okay, cool. Um, the whole the, the reason I'm really, really behind the let's go things is because they, they, they tweak the classic formula in a lot of ways. Uh, seeing Pokemon and then encountering them, not having to battle them. Um, <laughs> The whole, um, the whole making it a bit more, a bit more user friendly for the new newbies coming in, because if this if this franchise is going to keep going forward, we need new players, and we need those new players to get just as sick of the old formula as we are, so we get new shit. Yeah. Um, I do wish this game came with a higher difficulty level in the vein of Pokemon Black and White, because this game is almost insultingly easy, mm-hmm. uh, with a lot of ways to make it easier. Mm-hmm. Like new players. Don't- really need that. Kids are not idiots. We suffered through hard games when we were kids. They can do it as well. Um, all you need to do is just make the user interface a bit, bit easier and sort of make it more approachable, which this game does. It does that great. And it's intended to bring new people onto the franchise, so I'm not going to bag on it for that. It, the changes it does do, I like. The things I don't don't like about it, I... I can put those aside more than I can for Smash because I'm enjoying how it works. I like throwing Pokeballs at things. I like being able to sift through on my own little safari finding Pokemon that I love. It, I, I want to see that return, if nothing else. I had so much fun with that. Um, 
So you wouldn't mind a Let's Go Johto? Uh, I'd love a Let's Go Johto. Dude, Pokemon Let's Go Cyndaquil? Yes, please. Yes, yes, they like, pick like, like two other random things. Like, I think it's just the more, like, the chucking the Pokeballs, like, not battling. That's where I lose interest in it. Shouldn't like, they, that's where I find the interest in that. Shouldn't they call the hypothetical uh, Gen 2 1 uh, Pokemon Let's Joe Go? <laughs> well, yeah, but then only then only you and Yuki can play it. Yeah, I mean no, only Yuki can play it. I mean, I don't even know if I would. <laughs> yeah, exactly. I might do um, if, if if Sam does it, and we just cop it again. But it's actually online cop this time. You might do if you think there's shit in the head games. Just for the fact it's Johto. I mean, it'll look I, really pretty. Although, actually, fun fact about this: I don't know when this video is getting uploaded, but um, I saw an announcement today. Year. The the demo of this game just got released. <laughs> Yeah, yesterday. From, it'll be yeah, like yesterday. two days ago, because I'm probably uploading this tomorrow. Oh, Pokemon Let's Go has been released today. Yep. And it's like, well... And if you if you went to any kind of event or convention that had a demo there, it's that demo. Oh. So. Can I add one thing to the Let's Go thing, just as this is the last time we're going to talk about it? By all means. Because I feel like we've mentioned those little microtransactions every now and then. Mm. What about the, the macro... Uh, well, I guess if you would call it, I don't know. The fucking Pokeball item thing that you can only use with this game is bad enough on its own. The fact that that's the only way you can get Mew. Yeah. That's a bit of a big middle finger, if you ask me. Yeah, putting one solitary Pokemon behind a 40 quid paywall is. I mean, that's basically, not quite as bad as Sega Heroes, but. No, no, I'll give you that. So basically, it's DLC. Yeah, I mean, but kind of. It's a microtransaction, except it's not very micro. Yeah. yeah, it. I tell you what, it probably wouldn't be quite as bad if you could transfer the Mews that you have caught in Pokemon Go onto Let's Go. But you That'd be nice, because, you know, I have one of those. That would actually exactly. make me link the two games up. But you explicitly cannot. Mm -hmm. That is what makes it scum. Oh, yeah. Um, so, yeah, that seems like a proper actual like, a microtransaction, except for 40 fucking quid. Yes. Yeah, and we need to be hard on Nintendo for this, because they don't usually do it. Yeah. I don't want to point out I've used the Pokeball controller, because Declan got it, because of course he did. Yeah. It's okay. It's I, I have no strong feelings one way or the other. It's not like a bad controller. It, it works for what it does, and it's kind of fun to you know actually have the wrist strap and throw the Pokeball, because that's how you actually catch things. That's kind of cool, but it's not but 40 it's quid cool. Yeah. But it's a £40 peripheral for one game. Yeah, yeah that's, exactly. That's not going anywhere. They can't for anything else. Nope. Yeah, I mean, nope. they might release... I mean, maybe they'll release something for it, but it's like... You're basically just kind of wasting that money on something just to get a Mew. Yeah. I like, want to point out also that as soon as you transfer the Mew off, you cannot then transfer it again. It's gone and it's on whatever game you put it on, and that's there forever. That's it. Oh, so it's just a, a so £40 it's... DLC. I mean, I don't think anyone's going to play play Pokemon Lego on like competitive level, right? No, they're not. It's not. Man. There is there is a very small competitive scene for so it. I'm sure there is, is, but like. So this is basically similar to if I decided oh, I really wanted Joker, so I'm going to pay forty pound for a um, uh, quick uh, for Joker's um, mask that only works on. Yeah. Smash. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, exactly. It's a game. Yeah, it's, it's... Yeah, that seems scummy. Yeah, it is, it. unfortunately. But the content of what I got, because I didn't get the Pokeball. No, I didn't. Like... I put a point out, even though I used my favorite Pokemon, I did not buy it, and I wouldn't. Yeah. Um, yeah, I had a great time with this game streaming it. I had a great time off stream. I've played this game a lot since we stopped streaming. I got a... I will be honest, I've not turned it on... No, I have turned it on once off stream, because I played with Declan. We actually did a little bit of co-op for like... 10 minutes. Yeah, it turned it on once because yeah, you accidentally pressed the power button. <laughs> I have and accidentally that, clicked on it so more times than I've not. <laughs> and that is why I've placed it higher than you, Yuki. It, well, yeah. That's fair. But, yeah, I don't really have anything more to add to it. I've said, it, I've said my piece. Okay, Trent? Uh, I'm going to go with number six, God of War. Ah, hey. God, of hey. God of Four? God of Boy. God of Snore. <laughs> was, you know, let's go with that one. <laughs> okay. I mean, I'm I kind of have a love. I kind of have a. It's not really a hate. It's more like a love, uh, ambivalence relationship with God of War, where I've played the first three games, and it's like this is dumb, but it's fun, mm. mostly. And then there were like two, like a couple of spin-off games that I mostly ignored because they seemed completely pointless and superfluous, and I was right. 
So when they announced they were doing another God of War, which felt a bit odd because we destroyed the world in the third game, and this time we were going to go and hang out with all the Norse gods and kill them, and I thought I could get behind this. Norse mythology is fun and it's like underrepresented beyond like Thor and Mjolnir and all of yeah. those idiots. <laughs> yep. I really liked a lot of the aesthetic design choices. I really liked a lot of the creature designs. Uh, the big problem with the game overall is the combat and uh, the pacing is extremely weird because it's almost like the game has to keep keeps reminding you, oh yeah, you could just like free roam whenever because your son who's with you forever is always like, so what do you want to do, Dad? Do you want to like go and finish a quest or do you want to just go and do explore and do stupid shit? It's entirely up to you. It's like, thanks, game. I don't really need that reminding. I don't really need reminding of that. Hey, player, I, you're playing the game. I know I have choices. I'm a human being. <laughs> <laughs> you're still but, out, but yeah. Yeah, I did like most of the character development. Uh, there were a few plot elements or slash character arcs that just kind of happened and they came out of nowhere and were quickly summarily resolved, which is brought why this game is as low down as it is. Definitely don't think it was Game of the Year or whatever like awards people were going to give it. Although I really did like Kratos' voice actor this time. Oh yeah, yeah. He did a good I job. I haven't even played it, but his, yeah, he nails it. Was, yeah, uh, overall fun experience, but I, have yet, and I haven't replayed it yet. Uh, and I do know they have added a bunch of new features. I think it's free. This was all free updates. They included like a new game plus now. Yeah. Reduce some of the bullshit enemies down. So, yeah, maybe I'll get back to that now that I'm finished grinding for a lot of other stuff this month. Right, so, yeah. So, my number six, I'm not going to appear on anyone else's list. It's uh, Doodle Date. It was a. Uh, okay. It's a game that cost me like four quid, I think. Um, Wait, I think I saw the Grubs play this. Yes. I, I, I saw it, you play it. Josh did see me play it. <laughs> It was a fucking roller coaster ride, let me tell you. I mean, oh, th this was hot off the heels of us playing. We played DDLC, we played Catwa Shoujo, and then we played her Tofu boyfriend. And I thought every single visual novel is just crazy, right? It, there, there's no, there's, there's no like sensible, normal story. I guess Catwa was kind of normal, but Hasao was there, so it wasn't, it wasn't really. No, uh, no, Josh, I gave you an opportunity. All right, um, <laughs> but Doodle. I Okay, I fair enough. Myself, no <laughs> uh, Doodle Date, the basic mm, idea it, is it's a, it's a visual novel like any other, well, like any other that I play, apparently. Uh, but you draw everything. Fuck yourself. There we go. <laughs> Bit late. <laughs> uh, so you draw everything, including the person that you're dating, the waiter in the restaurant, the item of food that you're having, just everything. <laughs> Literally everything in the game, except for one character who is just always there. Mm -hmm. You have to draw it. And I thought, this was just when I got my art pads, I was like, I want to, you know, do something fun with it. This would be a good way to break it in. And it was. It was an awful lot of fun. I don't want to spoil. Uh, the, there's only, like, two storylines in it. I don't want to spoil them for anyone who hasn't seen it. Most people watching this probably have, because they're probably from the streams. If so, hi, guys. I hope you remember <laughs> Doodle Day. It was fun. But uh, it, I honestly, one of my one of my favorites of the vision novels that we played. It was a lot of fun. I say played. Obviously, vision novel isn't really a game. This one had a bit more gameplay in that you had to draw stuff. But it is just a story with, you know, visuals. <laughs> so a novel that has visuals. Yeah, on that's, it. that's what it is. I think, they, I think they call them picture books. Yeah, that's the one. Uh, I don't want to be one of these people that likes tries to argue whether it's a game or not. I don't care. Point is. I enjoyed it. It kind of counts as a game. It's on the list because it came out last year and there aren't any other visual novels I played that came out last year, so I wanted to talk about it because it's fun. And if you haven't played it, go play it. It's like four quid. It's definitely worth it. You'll beat the whole thing in like an hour, so it's good. good time. Just don't let anyone else see your Steam. Uh, Steam. <laughs> I mean... Okay. <laughs> so, number five. We are at the halfway point. Doing pretty good. Josh. <laughs> I'm going to go for Far Cry 5. Oh. Cool. I did really enjoy this. It's uh, set in America, finally, and it everything seems to... Uh, politically, it seems as more of a jab at pretty much everything American. Cool. Uh, you got your guns, you got your, uh, your religious peoples. I mean, 
I know you're trying to do an accent for a bit, but it just it just sounds like you've just been strangled, honestly. <laughs> I mean, as pleasant as that is to imagine, <laughs> it's not very but, clear. Uh, everything was fun about it, going hunting, like, you know, gathering materials, you know, but everything got to a point where everything just felt, I'm doing the same thing again and again and again and again. The main villain is really charismatic. It's just the problem is that the main villain is the only charismatic character. The main character has no voice. Uh, and the other three uh, are practically just the main villain. Slightly scaled down a little bit. Like, there's... Basically, it just feels like I'm doing the same thing over and over again. But the one thing I do like is its progression system. Instead of like doing our oh, mission, 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 here's the final boss. You've got to do a certain amount of missions. You've got to clear out a certain amount of uh, like bad guys and stuff like that before you can advance. So it's not just um, mission, 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 as I said. But it feels more... It feels more natural than just linear. It actually feels more open world. You can fuck about in it and still contribute no, towards the main story. Yeah. That's good. So what you're saying is it's a far cry from the game it was last last time. Uh -huh. yeah. Far Cry 3 is still the better game, but that's only because I feel that the main character I mean, was the fun part of it, even though the villain is the one that everyone talks about. I think you'll find the best Far Cry is the Far Cry movie. No, the less Uber Bowl has to do with everything. I think involved the better. Man, you know, if you ever want a good time, you should listen to the comment, listen to his commentary tracks on his movies. Um... <laughs> except, except for Alone in the Dark, he just doesn't give a fuck on that one. You could tell by, you know, watching the movie that he couldn't give a fuck well, on that no, one. No, but he interesting insights like he talk, on Blood Rain he talks about how it was cheaper just to hire prostitutes as extras than it was to hire actresses <laughs> and it's like, hey, those insights are interesting and then on the London in the Dark he's just like yeah this is shit this is shit <laughs> so yeah that's from Cry 5 <laughs> cool, <laughs> cool. Uh, my number 5 uh, Starlink Battle for Atlas um, ah. I'm surprised this got this high myself um this feels like what No Man's Sky could have been. <laughs> I yeah, Razor that Spectre is fucking dangerous. <coughs> Somewhere Just... Reese is turning in his grave. <laughs> uh, I hope he's not in his grave, Jesus. <laughs> no, we haven't. No, he just, he just sleeps with a gravestone, is all. Well. He's fine. Anyway, um, we've got a handful of planets with unique in e ecosystems, environments to explore. Various animals that you find can catalogue, scan. Uh, you know, each planet you visit feels like it's alive in its own way. You know, things function well with each other uh, in a relatively newly discovered star system in terms of the story. Um, lots of customization between both your vehicle and your pilot. Um, your weapons, which you can lock onto the little models from outside and change on the fly, depending on what you need. Various elemental weapons or a sort of aspects like that. Um, Storyline's actually pretty decent to encourage you through it. Like, all the characters bounce off of each other really well. Even fucking Fox McCloud, who kind of stands out amongst all of these, you know, humans and humanoid aliens. And then there's just a fox and his crew of furries. Yeah, well, he's got to protect the world order, Sam. I mean, I guess. But, like, even then, their involvement is tied into the plot in a really, like, believable way. Um, they don't they, they stand out a bit of design-wise, but they don't stand out um, their, their reasons for being there, how they're integrated into the story. Uh, every single playable character has got lines of dialogue for every single story bit, uh, whether they are the guy in the pilot seat or if they're on this, the main space station whose name I currently forget. Um, which, again, I love games that show that kind of attention to, de to detail. And maybe it's just because the Star Fox guys are in it, but this feels like the Star Fox game I've always fucking wanted. Um, you think it's great. I think you'll find it's called Star Fox 64. I mean, it, it, 
Well, no. Like, the Star Fox game that no, I love like Star most Fo is... It's Star Fox 64 and you'll fucking like it. No, it's Star Fox Assault. Um, and I like Star Fox 64. Still a great game, but this is the closest I got to, like, piloting around an Assault. Really? Be, is it great enough to be remade, like, three times, though? Yes. Um... <laughs> Yeah, of course it is. You're asking. You're asking a fanboy. Um, but what was I saying? Yeah. Um, very high pitched space battles could use a bit of tweaking. It feels a little bit slow for turning when you were in a dogfight, and it feels like everyone's quicker and better than you. But maybe that's just a difficulty spike getting to me. I'm not quite sure. Having an actual high quality Arwing model as well as a big Star Fox fan, that's a huge thing. And this model is really fucking cool. Um, but and again. You don't need to indulge the toys to life thing as well. That's that kind of blows my mind. Every bit of content that you could buy a toy to like unlock, you can buy digitally for cheaper in like I think less than half the price if you really want to. Um, it goes on offer very regularly as well as the game itself. You know, I didn't spend any extra money on it, but I could quite happily for you know no real additional thing. It's actually like probably the most positive microtransactions are handled in this entire list. Which, considering it's a Toys to Life game, wow, yeah. <laughs> Quite impressive. Yeah. Well, fair um, enough, I suppose. Um, yeah, yeah, well, I liked it. That's all I got. Cool. Great. Right. Uh, oh, my go. Yep. Number yeah. Five. Uh, it's my one is uh, Into the Breach. Into the Breach. Yes, it is a title that was made uh, it's on Steam and Switch now, I think, and it is made by the people who did FTL. Ah. Oh, it's yeah. yeah. It's a tactical RPG uh, turn-based uh, combat as well. Uh, yeah, sorry, it's called, again? Uh, like it's called In Into the Breach, where you have to... Well, basically, the plot is, is that Earth is fucked, <laughs> and there's only, like, four land masses left, and there are these evil insectoid creatures called the Vec that are attacking, and you are part of a group of time travellers, and it's up to you to take a team with your giant robots in order to fend off the uh, Vec, the invading Vec, and save what little remains of humanity. And every and it also incorporates the whole idea of resetting and restarting uh, into the idea of you're basically jumping timelines, like just this timeline is fucked, it's beyond saving, move on to the next, see if we can at least make their lives better. Shit. I really, okay. I really like a lot. Of, I really like it. The gameplay is just that kind of thing where, uh, if I had it on my, yeah, I think it's best on the Switch for being portable because it's very kind of like, it's mission based. So there's a lot of missions you can just do on the you can do and come back to later. And yeah, yeah. I, I mean, I'm I'm looking up screen grabs on Google. Well, this is I'm, doing now. I'm looking into Steam and stuff. Yeah, it sounds really good. Yeah, I, I, this looks like Final Fantasy Tactics. I'm That's a pretty game. sure this did this won some it won something at the VGA. So it was like best either tactical RPG or best uh, indie game. Or no, not best indie game. That probably went to Celeste. But it, it did was, go to uh, Celeste. Yeah, yeah. It uh, has got awards. So I'm not the only one out there who's like, man, this game was great. No, I cool. saw a lot of people put, tweeting about it. Cool, <laughs> putting it on the wish list. Neat. And there's like a bunch of additional challenges you can do to unlock even more content, even more. Uh, uh, mechs to use and there's all these ideas that you have pilots who have different abilities and every character levels up and they get different abilities and there's like a whole things like how you particularly build your team for that particular run do you focus on damage, do you focus on speed do you focus on defense Yeah, so there's a lot of decision making goes into it and I do think it's great for like kind of playing in short bursts where you've got nothing else to do cool Yeah, mm, I'm going to have a look at that when I <clears throat> oh, chance. That's, that looks actually really good. Mm. All right, neat. Well, uh, my number five. We've had spoken about twice already. Spyro reignited. Hey. Um, it's kind of interesting that I liked it more than everyone else seems to have. But uh, I guess it's because everyone else was replaying a game they'd already played, whereas I was playing Spyro one and two for the first time ever. I've never played them before. Um, yeah, that would probably have something to do. So yeah. it was quite interesting. I haven't played the Spire 3 on it yet, so I have no comment on that in any way, shape, or form. This is just based on 1 and 2, which is probably why it's lower down on the list, because I've only played two-thirds of the game. Um, I thoroughly enjoyed all of it. Um, someone was saying about something about Spire being very kid-friendly, and I, I, I kind of get that. I kind of, like, when he's talking to people, I felt like his interactions in most cases were sort of just not really interactions. They were sort of just... 
He says a line. They say a line. That's it. They didn't it's really feel like conversations ever, and that kind of was jarring. It's affirmation, not conversation. Yeah. Yeah, but aside yeah. aside from that, I actually didn't find anything. You know, I thought the voice acting was great. Uh, I did actually really like Spyro's voice. I just wish he said things that were useful <laughs> ever in any way, shape, or form. <laughs> I didn't mean to make it imply that like, oh, I hate the voice. It's just more the what the no, 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 I, I understand that. I was just how it's you know. well the way he's saying it. Like the it's, yeah, like, I'm, we're me and Sam are more used to this him just having a bit more of an attitude. So things have like he says a bit more teeth to them. So when he's like being threatening, it has like oh he's being serious as opposed to here where it's like ah. Oh, oh. <laughs> yeah, no, I, I do get that. He did seem like he was just being adorable the whole time. Uh, which is completely opposite to how he acts because going through Spyro 1 and 2 I thought, I'm pretty sure like 99% certain I'm playing the bad guy here. Uh, <laughs> Spyro is the bad guy, right? Like that's no, that's canon? Not. No, because it really seems like it. The first game, the dragons were talking shit on this guy so he did something bad and then Spyro's just like, yeah cool, I'll save all the dragons and kill a bunch of innocent people for no reason. Game yeah, number so two. Can... Let's go and destroy as many ecosystems as possible. Fuck I it, mean... I'm going to swap sides midway through this war between two races. I'll help both of them out. Like, what the fuck is he doing? He's just constantly murdering everyone in his sight and he gives no shits. I mean, was anything, <laughs> was anything they said about Nasty Nork untrue, though? No, but that doesn't matter. They're just saying that he, oh, he's a, he's a mean old guy. It's like, okay, you're just being mean to this guy. Why? He Why are you just being mean to on TV? Ugly. The second game, the professor literally kidnaps Ripto. I mean, Ripto, then then going. Yeah, to Ripto's steal the then like, you. hey, you know what? If you're gonna kidnap me, fine. I'll At first, he just says, "I'm gonna live here because there's no dragons." Cool, and they're like, "Oh no, that's bad! Don't let him go home to pick up his fucking possessions. Let's yeah, lock him here." No, I'm sorry, Spyro's the bad guy. I no one's gonna where, change my mind on that. This is also where the voice acting comes in, because in original, Ripto is is extremely obviously just evil from the start. That's fair. I mean, he's clearly supposed to be in this one, but. The fact that the way he ended up there, he didn't choose to go there. He didn't choose to do any of that. As far as I'm concerned, he's still a bad guy. I mean, what you're working on the same side as money bags. He's a bad guy. And Hunter. Hunter's the fucking most evil villain in all of video games. <laughs> this is not... <laughs> Wait, money bags does more... You. You just bribe him to help you. <laughs> he's yeah, and then you get all your money back, back at the end and you didn't even have to chase him around like you do in Spyro 3. Yeah, he didn't willingly give it back to you, though, did he? That's what we expect from J. Jonah Jameson. He still had to get his shit kicked in. Just by Hunter, of all people. Hunter didn't really kick his shit in. He just said, hey, give him the money back, and he did. Point uh, is, uh, for the most part, I really enjoy Spyro 1 2. Spyro 1 is a very, like, sort of empty game, I suppose, but it's to be expected to be the first one. Spyro 2 had a lot of cool stuff in it. Um... Wasn't I guess I wasn't the hugest fan. Uh, I, I obviously I'm still com I was comparing everything to Spyro Three, so I think Hunter was the thing that pissed me off the most. Like some of the missions were like the fucking Alchemist mission. Oh Train yeah, yeah. That like they 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 designed that just to piss you off. Like there wasn't there wasn't a good level design. It was just no. We're gonna make a level that sole purpose and entire point of existence is just to piss you off. And no, I wasn't a big fan of that. But most yeah, of the yeah. levels were great. The game looked great, sounded great. So I enjoyed myself. Believe it or it... not, it's it's much better in Reignited than it is in original. Yeah, I can well, yeah, imagine. Because the original doesn't have uh, inbuilt analog control, so it's a lot harder to actually aim at the thing before oh, they hit. Oh, I can totally imagine. I can like easily see how it's way easier this time. The point is, it's still infuriating, which made me glad I never played it as a kid. <laughs> uh, yeah, so uh, number four right. then, I guess. Josh? Uh, I'm going to go with Jurassic World Evolution. Isn't that that, like, right. mobile game, or...? No, it's the, uh, Park Sim. Yeah. Oh, okay. The funny thing is, this game's not exactly... But I pref I played the original Jurassic Park, uh, Operation Genesis. Yeah. And I absolutely adored that game. And this game seems like a more watered-down version of it. Okay. But you uh, built... You've got different... Uh, on one island and you gradually move up to um, different islands until you reach Isla Nublar to create your own Jurassic Park island. Okay. This is all new to Sam. Um... <laughs> <laughs> You're going to have to explain. I thought, I thought we were going to go through this whole spiel without one of you fuckers taking a shot. 
I thought it was going to happen, but no. <laughs> if you think it wasn't me. Yeah, right. <laughs> so basically, you build your own... Uh, you get uh, little missions, uh, like create this uh, dinosaur build these kind of structures and there's uh, and get different star ratings for the amount of people that come into your park yeah um you've got to set out your different like you know uh, a ranger station a helicopter station so in case any dinosaurs get sick or any of them uh like you know escape you've got to put out different uh restaurants or different um uh Oh, you know, it's just a, it's one of those games that isn't it's really fun to play and I could just sit there for hours. It sounds very much like Theme Park one back yeah. in the day, which I totally... And also you can delete the uh, fences and then watch everyone run around whilst Velociraptors eat your guests. I was going to say, surely you should already, when you, surely when you like manage to not have... Like all of your guests get horribly murdered by dinosaurs. You're already doing better than any time any single one of these movies ever did with the yeah. park. Yeah. Yeah, but yeah, you get it's, it's, it's you get those, like, uh, I remember people saying about like, oh, deleting roller coasters and stuff, so then they go cleaning off. Well, uh, you don't get to see uh, people running in fear as a T Rex goes roaming around, going, "Oh, there's lunch. Oh, there's lunch." There is one thing I know about the game, even though I've not played it. That Josh has failed to mention, and it's all narr- narrated by Jeff Goldblum. Yes, yes, it is. That instantly gives it so many bonus points. You should have mentioned that. <laughs> yeah, hence why it's so high in my list. When it... I, I completely understand now. Before this, I was questioning it, but now, no, nope, I'm surprised it's not higher. <laughs> <laughs> It is just, but it's one of those that I could just sit there and just, like, when I was going through, like, a real bad time of my anxiety, funnily enough, this game really helped. I guess you could say it was a Jurassic Lark. You had some fun in the Gratatious period. Uh... (laughs) (laughs) Wow. I need a a third for the trifecta, Trent. No, I'm sorry, I think this line of, I think this, like, Comedy line has gone extinct. <laughs> there it fucking is. <laughs> nice. Oh, uh, we oh. really went for the Triassic there. Nice. Nah, it's dead. Just like the dinosaurs. Uh, <laughs> but uh. yeah, it was just really fun. Uh, so <coughs> I really watched Jurassic Park. Uh, so anyway, <laughs> <laughs> right. My number four then. <laughs> 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 All right, uh, Marvel Spider-Man. Oh, yeah, it's here. Of course, it's fucking here. The game's amazing, even though I don't want it to be. You're given a, a great little playground, an amazingly fun way to get around. A lot of bad guys to beat the hell out of. Lots of techniques to do it with. A lot of cool outfits to look good in. A really good story to tie it all together and motivate you to do it. Like it's just a really good, solid game. It's I'm... hard to find anything wrong with it, which pisses me off because I don't want it to be good. I'm confused as to this line of as to this reasoning. Man, I fucking hate that I love this game so much. I do because Spider Man Spider Man I was the negative one. Yeah, I know, but like well, I'm not being negative about the game. The game's great. But I don't like Spider Man and I like this Spider Man. But you like Suicide Squad, so instantly that means Wait, uh, yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm sorry, you don't like Spider Man. No, no, I, Spider-Man as a character really fucking irritates me. You don't like Spy- you don't like Spider-Man. No, no, I don't like Spider-Man. You don't like Spider-Man. I don't right, like- Right, Train, I'm don't. coming around to your thoughts of him having wrong opinions. Oh my fucking god. Look, I don't like I'm Spider-Man t- either, to be fair. I'm Hold trying on. to say I like the game you like. Give me a chance. Hold on. Woo! <laughs> 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 okay, I'm not gonna do that. Let's not. Oh. Right. Point is, I needed, I needed this game to do well because it meant superhero games for featuring characters I actually like. It's given the same level of love that Spidey got here. And I love the continuity. I, I love the appreciation of the legacy of the character, even if I don't like that character. You know, the sad thing is I'm going to have to re-listen to this so I can get the time code of you saying I don't like Spider-Man just so I can link it to people whenever I talk about you and I say you have nothing but wrong opinions. Oh, Train, you do talk about me. I do, because yeah. people don't believe me. They're like, that can't be true. And I do need evidence. And I need evidence, so thank you for that. 
<laughs> Do you guys see how mean he is to me? Am I unjustified in this case? Yes! Yeah. Josh? No! No! It's Spider Man! How can you hate Spider Stalemate. It's stalemate. Democracy Gosh. works. I like this game and I think it's really good. Apparently, that is enough to get these guys against me. Trey, your number four, please. My number four? Uh, Super Smash Bros. Yeah, there it is. I mean, I guess I'll have to actually speak positively about this game. <laughs> well, I mean, I just, I honestly, like, I played through World of Light and they didn't care for it, but I didn't, I didn't find the grind of unlocking characters, considering you can just kind of cheese the unlock system by playing. Oh, no, that's what I did, yeah. I just yeah. cheesed the unlock system. I did cheese it, and I still found it grindy as fuck. See, I didn't, because I really still like unlocking stuff, so it gave me more time with characters to go, man, I really hate this character, man, I really hate this character. I hate all my mains from the last game, let's just go with those. Uh, the second I unlocked Bowser Jr., Yuki, like, cried and died a little inside. <laughs> yes, yeah, but see, that's, that's one of the issues that I had with it, though. It felt like just, I might as well still be playing it on the Wii U. Hmm. There was no... But... It's one of those, they could have just ported it over, added a few more characters and done. I mean, that's, that's kind of what they did. Didn't have to wait so long for it. I mean... And add in a pointless fucking uh, single-player mode. I mean, I wouldn't say pointless. Like, it's there to give you... It's like, kind of... As I said, it's when it's one of those things where I would say it's built for... It's also, that's also built for on-the-go if you're not, like... Just want to do a fight. If you want to, like, also then do fight with all these crazy... Uh, extra layers, that's how I looked at it. It's like, oh, do you want to do a fight where you're just against, like, three giant people? Yeah, you can do that. You want to do a fight where there's assist trophies on the it's to kill you? I mean, why would you? But you can do that. <laughs> it was, as I said, this World of Light was it was there, but then again, I never play Brawl, so I don't have, like, strong uh, ideas as to what Super Smash Bros. single-player content beyond beating up, other, beating up AIs. I think my really issue, has. I think the reason why I don't have such a strong connection with Smash is just because I'm not, like, a huge... Like, I've never played any of the... I think I've only played one Mega Man game, and it wasn't even part of the main series. It was one where, like, you went into, like, the computers. You know, Mega Man's not a Nintendo character. It's about right? Network. Yeah, there's, like, lots yeah. of... Yeah, but you know what I mean? Like, you know, I don't. I haven't played many... Mari I'm not a huge Mario fan. I'm not... I, mean, I wouldn't say I'm a massive you, fan you, of them. You like, you like the game where everyone meets, you don't like where they all come from. Yeah, so I don't understand a lot of, like, I've never played any of the Bayonetta games. I, it's one of those things that I don't have a huge connection with the characters. I mean, you know, you're not well, I don't characters. mind the game, but, like, you know, I just don't have a huge connection with the characters, and I just felt, mm. They're basically just action figures that you smash together. That's, that's the whole thing. Mm. All they are. I don't know. I, I feel like at, at its core, it's just extremely of, fun of... gameplay. So, like all the additional additional things, while like might not be perfect, it's they are ultimately additional. They are ultimately just additions to the core basic game. Which, even if it didn't have World of Life, it didn't have Spirits, it would still be like extremely fun, uh, fun games just to play. Like I'm probably the only one here who does play it. Like on my like solo away from playing with groups is like background noise if I'm watching something and I'm like yeah I don't really want to play like a story invested game because I want to finish grind through all these videos I've got to do so just play no, that's fair enough. classic that, mode that's, and... that, that, that's the difference with me like when I'm doing that like you know like going through videos and stuff like that I can play a good RP like you know play The Witcher or something like that and grind through some levels and stuff like that that's where my RP <laughs> I'm I sure enjoy. like all of my positives are going to be outweighed by someone else's positives. Yeah, it looks like someone's going to be talking happily about this game. Although I won't say much well, about what I like. What did you say wrong about the game? There was nothing but positive. I didn't say wrong. No, I'm just saying I'm going to be talking a lot differently. We'll, we'll see when we get there. Okay. Uh, which right, isn't you, now, because I believe four. it's my number four now, right? Yeah, it's your number four. Uh, so I want to talk about the Sega Mega Drive Classics. Or some people in the world are going to call it the Sega Genesis Classics, but they're also incorrect. It's the Sega Mega Drive Classics, what it says in the box. Uh, so that must be the name of it. Um, basically, it's a collection of <laughs> games from the Sega Mega Drive, if that wasn't obvious. Oh, is it the plug-and-play one? Uh, no, no, no. It's a it's a PS4 game. Um, I think right, it's out okay. on like Xbox, Switch, and other stuff as well. Um, it is. It's, they did one on Xbox 360 a while ago that had like 20-odd 
Sega Mega Drive games. I had that. That was cool. That was neat. Um, this one's got like 50 games on it, which is kind of ridiculous. It's got games on it that they A, couldn't get rights to before, and B, some games I've never even bloody heard of. Some of them are fucking awful. They're terrible. Absolutely some of the worst games I've ever played in my life. But there are also a lot of really good games on there. A lot of... Yeah, but notice how uh, the Se uh, Sega are no longer bringing out um, console. Yeah. Um, it's a very very hit and miss collection, but I like that they sort of included one or two things from a whole bunch of different series. You know, it wasn't just, here's all the Sonic games like they normally do. Um, it doesn't actually have Sonic 3 and Knuckles on, though, which is kind of disappointing. I don't know why. Seems a bit of a weird choice to me, but whatever. Um, aside from that one gripe, uh, the best thing about this game, even though I haven't used the feature yet, is that any of the multiplayer games you can actually play online, like all of them. The fighting games, the co-op games, all of it, you can just play it online, which I don't know why they, no one's ever thought of, let's get a whole bunch of old games that you can't play online, and now you can play them online, because that's genius. One day, me and yeah. Sam will play Game Ground, and we will we complete will. it. We will. No one else only... knows or cares about Game Ground, but I don't care because it's one of my favourite games. I think uh, the only other thing that's taken like old games and made them playable online is I think the Street Fighter, like either the Ultra Street Fighter Two or the Street Fighter Legacy Collection. Thing. I know Ultra Street Fighter Two you can play online, um, but that's like just one game, like a whole collection of just here's a bunch of old games. Like if I really want to play Virtua Fighter online, I could. I wouldn't want to because Virtua Fighter <laughs> sucks, but <laughs> I sure could if I wanted to. Yeah, no. I just I just like it. It's a nice bundle of things. If I'm I'm more recently I'm sort of not really into playing really long length games. So having a small collection of here's a small game I can just pick up, play it for a bit, and be done with it. You know I don't have to focus too much on it. That's sort of what that game's been for me. You know sometimes I'm streaming I'm like I I, I should stream a game. I don't know what to stream. Just chucking that disc and there's a whole bunch of things I could stream from there. You know. So. Mm. I've been quite. I've I've quite enjoyed it. It's. I'm glad that it, the collection exists. It's probably the best collection of Mega Drive games you can get. Honestly. Fair so. That's fair. And there's yeah. been a lot of those. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. <laughs> All right. Uh, on to number threes then. Josh. Three. I'm going to go for Red Dead Redemption Two. Ooh. Ah, I was hoping it would crop up somewhere. But to be honest, I really enjoyed a lot of this game. Good. Pretty much, I spent nearly a week and a half just playing through this game, finding every little crook and cranny, like, every little thing, doing every tiny little piece that could be done. Like, getting haircuts, going out, finding treasures, um, finding out backstories from characters, uh, looking through towns, trying to find every little secret, um, playing sh uh, shootouts, uh, going to uh, take out any clans like you know it was really i was really involved with the game and i was really immersed until near the end oh, no. and mm, i end, probably know where this is gonna go and in the end it just felt sort of like you know huh oh, like, there was no real sort of like I don't know, it didn't feel like it ended it in a satisfactory way. I'll chime this in. The problem comes in is that because, it, if, despite the title misleading you, it's a prequel to Red Dead 1. Yeah, and everything and... just feels a bit like you know so what's going to happen. Yeah, it has to lead to a point that Red Dead Redemption uh, started and the, that. The problem is, you know, these characters are in the first game. These characters are going to be in the game set in like five years, and these characters were not. Which kind of does make some of their fates a lot pretty obvious. Like some characters, are like yeah, you, you, he gets, a, he doesn't die. Like oh no, they're trying to tell in the first five minutes, John Marston dies to wolves. Yeah, he's probably dead, Abigail. And it's like, well, clearly fucking isn't though, is he? Who do you think you're kidding, game? <laughs> it's just like yeah. well, when, uh, it gets to a certain point where he's just like, well, I know he's gonna live. I know he's gonna die. He's gonna die. There's no stakes. Yeah. And it just removes you from the game. It and just it, drags you out and then it, it all and, sort of becomes a slog. And the actual ending is just like, oh, okay. Like, the very sort of, when you get past the, like, three-hour epilogue. Yeah, and it's like, oh, are you serious? Oh, it, Three-hour it, epilogue? Yeah. Yeah. Holy fuck. You get, you get to the end of that, and it's like, oh, right, yeah, because Red Dead 1 has still has to happen, so this and is your point. didn't take that long. Well, to be fair, this is a fully playable, like, epilogue that's 
yeah, without trying, without spoiling too much. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah it's it, it's one of those that it's such a great game, but then you realise there are no stakes. Uh, I only talk, I only talk about it because spoilers. It's not on my list at all. Yeah. Yeah. Fair enough. But every other part of the game was great. If it weren't for, uh, uh, like, um, I mean, it's your top three, man. Yeah, who was it who uh, said about like uh, what game was it that it's because of the previous one? Uh, I did. Yeah, because I said about hackers' memory. Yeah. Yeah, if it weren't for the first game, this would have had a lot more going for it. Yeah, it, it's yeah. the classic case of they should have made it like a kind of completely separate story, not tried to tie it directly into the first one. Yeah, like you could have kept a lot of the same themes and ideas, and you could have even like kept most of the same plot. But it just would. But if you'd have cut out the characters that you know are gonna be are gonna be in the next one, yeah, without yeah. trying to like set up everything, then it it becomes a much stronger game. It'd be a much stronger storyline and narrative. Yeah, and you so... could take it places where it wasn't just that. And then this character just kind of loses his mind for no reason. And then this character just kind of is, it just, just suddenly decides, oh, I'm a, I'm, you know, I spent the whole game saying I'm a bad guy, but I'm a good guy now. Yeah, yeah, thank you. Like, thank you. That's, a, that's like, another thing. Five seconds. With an honorable, uh, bloody, um, uh, as an honorable character doing honorable things, and then all of a sudden in the story, he's doing terrible things, or saying, oh, I'm, I'm not a nice guy. No, the way I've been playing it, you are a nice guy. And they it ends with you being a nice guy, with him saying, I'm not a nice guy, what the fuck? Yeah, they have like a whole thing where it's based on like choices and actions, and oh, you have a reputation and honour and dishon- honourable and dishonourable statuses. The, the first that, one had that problem as well. But that's ultimately... But no, it's even worse, because there was like there was never really a point where characters necessarily commented on like John Marston's uh, what he was doing necessarily so there was always like you up in the air as to how much with uh, Red Dead 2 to make it very clear like what pe- other people think of the character and his actions no matter what choices you make or things you do yeah so yeah oh, fair enough okay then Sam right my number three uh, my number three is Soul Calibur 6 um, okay uh, Soul Calibur has always been my personal go-to fighting game, um, and I really I couldn't be happier with this with the more most recent installment. They brought back a lot of what got excised in five, um, which is a story about with any kind of depth and a lot of the characters' move sets. Um, like try trying to play uh, what was it? What was it? What was it? Um, Fighters? No, no, no. Um, uh, who was the guy who replaced Keelik in five? Oh, Space uh, Seven. Sheba? Uh, yeah, Sheba. Um, yeah, trying to play him. I and just realise all the things he was missing from Keelik. And not even like having replacements for, but just not having. Um, Maxi lost so many of his moves in 5. Uh, it's just little things like that. And they added back all the depth they took away from 5 to try and make it more Street Fighter-y. Um, and it does keep some of those influences. Uh, the Critical Edge attacks... Um, but they're still there. Building meter is still there, uh, where meter wasn't really ever a thing before five. But I like how it's introduced. Uh, the reintroduction of soul charge as a different mechanic that upgrades everyone's move sets, gives them a generic power boost. Uh, in some cases, transforms them entirely. In the case of Keelik and Aswell, um, it, it uh, having having things to do with your meter besides um, sort of be be prepared for guard crushes or use them up for a critical edge. That's quite good. That is the way it should work in this style of fighting game, rather than, you know, stuff like Mortal Kombat, where you're enhancing moves, or Street Fighter, where you're spending it on other things. Um, you know, they dial back what didn't work, they enhance what did. Um, the choice of characters here was a bit slim, but there's still a wide variety of stuff to learn, aside from the fact there's three guys with Zwyanders, but whatever. You can also create Skull Servant, which... Oh, yeah, yeah. Character creator is the same as it was in 5, but 5, it was probably the high point of the game. Like, so, so fucking in-depth. Well, I've heard um, about, like, um, uh, Soul Calibur 5 was basically just, like, trying to get as much... Like, just... ...the game. Uh, yeah. As a it, cash it, Like, that's it, where it's... they added the Star Wars characters. That's no, four. That, that's four. Five, oh, is that where four? They ha- 5 is where they had Ezio. 
Yeah. All oh, right. Uh, the, pro- the problem with Five is Five was a game that, as far as I'm aware, uh, Bamco was not interested in making. It only got made yeah. because Harada, the direct, the you know, sort of head of tech or like Tekken, basically right. tried, went, basically got involved and said, "No, let's make this." And then they were halfway through doing it, and they were like, mm, "Fuck it!" Like, cut down all the content, just release it. Yeah, no. Uh, so, so Caliber Five was done dirty, which doesn't excuse how bad that game is. But sounds like an EA. Well, it's like mechanically five was a fun- was still functional. It's just it's still all its story content got shit got cut down, and wow. a lot of the things that would have explained the elements that happened just didn't ha- didn't Fair appear enough. in the game. Well, not even just story, but yeah, frankly, um, and you know, Soul Calibur Six fixed it and gave us a really good roster and lots. It's just it's so much fun to fight it. Like holy shit, the stream I had with Yuki where we were just <laughs> fighting characters in Soul Calibur Six. That's the most fun I've had in a fighting game. Yeah, no lizard man though, so yeah, four, four out of ten. Well, yeah, we got we got to have hope for multiple uh, seasons of DLC because I want Huang back. But you want your Huang back? Yes, I want my Huang back. I mean, <laughs> <laughs> honestly, I'll take Alpha Patroclus please, from five. Please, still oh, yeah, uh, Alpha Patroclus is. I mean, it doesn't justify the character, but yeah. Is that all Setska? Let's bring, yeah, bring her back. Well, I prefer Alpha Patroclus as moveset, but sure. Hmm. Yeah, yeah that's... fifty quid. Hmm. Sorry. Um, but yeah, really excellent fighting game at my own kind of speed, and just everything great about Soul Calibur in one solid package. I love it. Next cool. One. Uh, my number three, it's Dragon Ball Fighters. Ah. Because mm. this game looks fucking amazing and perfect. <laughs> like I'm just gonna talk about visuals for a second, leaving aside just even the art style. The Go for it, that, I did. The fact that basically every animation and fret is ripped almost directly from either the from either one of the various anime series or from the in, a lot of times the original manga itself. It does. It is like, a almost very every like game. basically every attack has some frame of reference from the source material. That is true. You have a huge variety of characters, and then also six Goku's. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> oh shit! I forgot about that. Always have the fo- always have the team of the fighting Goku's. <laughs> I just wish that if you were um uh tr- if you had Trunks and Goku on the same team, Trunks would shout out, "Don't shoot! Don't shoot! <laughs> Do not shoot! Hold your fire! This man isn't black." <laughs> I mean... <laughs> yes, yes, yes. Oh, sorry. For <laughs> but like from a vis- just a pure visual stylistic standpoint the game is perfect yeah I, yeah I I didn't go into this when I said it but this is a I do agree with this point yeah the even fact that really Marvel ver- the fact that it kicked out Marvel versus Capcom I- Infinite at Evo oh, even yeah. though even though this was its like first year of being made or being released to the public and that's just un- that does not happen. Like it's one of the hypest games to see at any kind of competitive level. Like even like low tier fights still look fun and uh, refreshing. High yeah, tier see, fights are just insanity. Yeah, see, like you know, I'm just not good enough for it. Like, like for the game, like to yeah. like truly enjoy it. The fact that so many dumb characters get viable for there was the when the game first was considered top tier. Yeah, it was. Because he had imp- and and it was was practically unplayable. And but it's the point was like uh, so many. Um, there's not just beyond mechanics. There's also depth to it. There's a difference between knowing like your basic combo and then knowing what moves string into other, like Sam was saying, and what supers you can combo into, and what assists you can do. Because that's also the point. The fact that it's a yeah, three on three battle battle why, game. That's probably why I. That's why it's not on my list. Just for the fact that I'm not good enough at the game. Spoilers, uh, <laughs> which is which is also why Marvel vs. Capcom, uh, which is also got to thank it Marvel vs. Capcom Infinite for giving up the slot of having a viable tag uh, tag based two uh, D fighter. Mm, thanks, yeah. thanks Infinite for being so garbage. Yeah, can I can I can I just put it out there? Why are fighting games afraid to like do tag team mechanics anymore? Um, well, they're not. It's just so a lot of them are bi- a lot of fighting game series are built more around like people who are or people who are invested in those mechanics already. Yeah. So it becomes a lot harder for them to justify, and then we're just going to do something completely different without making a new IP. 
So like Street Fighter is built completely off of the whole one of the whole one v one system. So then making a tag Street Fighter is not really in like another ta a different tag game and say yeah, you know that while some people go oh it's really great that you're innovating. There's the core audience who are buying the game going, why are you making it a tag game? Well, fighting games are different from, like, other ga other games, because, like, ostensibly a fighting game is entirely competitive, right? It's yeah. built entirely of just basically two players going against each other, so variations in that isn't necessary, versus, like, if you're, say, like, making Assassin's Creed, where, like, eventually you need to try and convince people that they're not just buying the same game every year. Yeah. So you do need to change things. So I didn't say they succeeded, but I'm using that as an example of a good game developer. Let's not make let's not make people buy that game again. Let's give them something new. Whereas with fighting games, because there's other things they change, by strings, the way move sets work. The basically, all you have to do is basically like you know change some of the uh, combos, make the game look prettier, change sort of how the fights work, or do none of that and release Street Fighter Five. <laughs> Shit! <laughs> I'm gonna say it, Street Fighter Five fucking sucks. I mean, yeah. it sucks, and it's got a scummy way of going about its business, but it's completely Shut catered to the head. it's completely catered to the esports crowd, and it ruins it because esports and the FGC do not get along, famously. But yeah, fight is really good visual looking game. Gameplay is solid because Arc Systems doing a two D fighting. They know and what they It actually they're... feels very much like it replicates. As a fan the... of the series, I enjoyed it as well because it also had something. It also had um, a unique story. I mean, no, yes and no, yes and no. I mean, it was a it was a story that was new. They they put a modicum of effort into it. They in the set. They in the sense do that what they watch every other Dragon Ball series does is in, right. In the sense that they watch the in the sense they watch the Boo saga and said, "Okay, what if we did this, but with breasts?" <laughs> yeah, but you know what I mean. Every other Dragon Ball game is it's a retelling so of the just retelling of all that. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, I get you, but yeah, it's a great looking game. Uh, maybe, cool. maybe. Uh, Arc Systems can continue this string of making games that release on time. <laughs> Persona 4. <laughs> yeah, Persona awesome. 5. <laughs> no, I mean, they made Persona yeah. 4 Arena, and that was like oh, six right. months. That was a six month gap between everyone else getting it and us getting it for no real explained reason. They just decided not to give the publisher a, a, bit, a build of the game to publish. Because oh, they're fucked. <laughs> That's pretty bad. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Oh, yeah, that's my number three. Okay, yeah, I guess my number three. Um, the world ends with you, Final Mix. Yee. It had to be on here somewhere. It's such a great remake of the original games. I just wish I could talk about it more. I wish, like, I feel like it would have been higher if I'd have maybe finished it, or you know, yeah. even got to Joshua's story maybe. No, he's right here. But I didn't. Uh. So basically, well, I can tell you my story. It starts in 1992. All right. Well, that's enough of that. <laughs> Maybe I should put it down the list. <laughs> okay. One, we don't have time for that. Two, when have any of us ever called you Joshua? Never. I have. He has. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. He doesn't count. He's known you for like ever. I promise, Josh. I will never call you Joshua. <laughs> he only called him Joshua when he's really like fucked up. <laughs> yeah, the, the same instance when I get called Samuel. Anyways, what ends with you? Yes, uh, right. is a really great game. The actual, like, the original game that I played all the way through and know all of it. Um, I loved every second of the original game. Uh, the new one looks nicer, sounds nicer. You still have the original soundtrack on the game as well, which is just perfect. I don't know why more games don't do that. Just give us the new one and the old one. Thank you. Yes, please. I will take all of that. Um, and honestly, I thought the motion controls were going to be off at first, but they're not. They actually work really well, and I actually really like using them. So that kind of surprised me. I mean, yeah, it would be better on a system with two screens like it was designed for. And I'm not so big on the partner system in this game. I prefer the old one, but I don't really know how you can do that now. So Yeah, that's basically impossible to do with anything other than a DS. <laughs> yeah, so I'll, I'll, I'll let it off of that and say that it can have third slot just because I'm pretty sure I'm going to enjoy the rest of it when I play through it. I, that, I mean, I know the story of the main game, at least. So I know I at least like that. I like all the characters. 
You know, it's just a game that I really like, but a newer version that is nicer. <laughs> what more is there to say? I mean, Sam will... I mean, oh, no, Sam won't say anymore. And neither will Josh. No, no, definitely not. <laughs> number twos, please. Josh, number two. My number two is The World Ends With You. <laughs> Whoa, surprise! <laughs> I never actually play, played the originals. Oh, boy. Like, so this is the first time I've ever actually played it. Yep. So I did have a bit of an issue with the um, uh, controls at first. Understandable. Yeah. Everyone um, who played the Wadens with you did, even on the DS. Oh, yeah. Um, however, by the end of it, I really enjoyed it. The story just felt so nice. Like, everything just... I loved the characters. I loved the fact that I was continuously guessing certain stuff. Like, I thought, right, oh, yeah, this is obvious. And then it's like... Oh, and then they switch it around again and say, like, oh, you pricks. Like, <laughs> I never felt like I couldn't once sit there and think, right, okay, this is what's happening. Yeah, like, you were very much to... engaged with the story. Yeah, but also, like, once, it, once I got to a certain point, like, I was actually enjoying the combat, and I was sitting there, like, you know, there were my podcasts on, and uh, grinding through the combat, like, you know, getting levels up, leveling up my pins, you know, trying to, and, you know, I just found it so much fun. There wasn't a point where I was going, oh, for fuck's sake, like, you know, getting really pissed off with the game. Mm, yeah. It was more pissed off with my own ability. Yeah, and that's that's almost something easier to swallow because you can acknowledge and register your own mistakes and then alter what you're doing. And then alter what I'm doing. Uh, some of the fights I felt like, you know, there was one fight that I was getting really pissed off with until I figured it out. I was like, oh, 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 like that. And then all of a sudden, it felt good to beat the boss. I was just like, oh, so that's what I've got to do. And then one issue I did have with it, though, is that once I found my combo of pins, mm -hmm. like the pins to use, I basically won the game. I mean, there's yeah. always going to be a best set of everything. Oh, no, it, yeah, yeah, yeah. But it was just sort of like, you know, it was at that point, it was just like, oh, I got a new pin. I won't try yeah. it, but I got a new pin. That's nice. Yeah, no, it, well, I considering there's like, oh, I think just over 300 different types of pins and attacks that you get from, from those. Yeah, but still, it, it, much fun with it. And I still haven't done the uh, added part of the game. So I'm going to move into that soon, uh, just because of other games. Uh, but um, the, I loved the character so much. That I, I definitely want to play more of it. Like, Ooh. and if they brought out a sequel to it, adding, like, you know, showing what's happening. Well, after, like, f no, fully after, I, I would like to play it. Well, there might be something to do. I might, there might be something about that coming eventually. Uh, we can't talk. We can't talk about that on this year's list. I know. I didn't say anything. I just said eventually. <laughs> And I'm sure it will be extremely dumb and stupid, and I'll hate it. Yeah, which means we we'll love it. Um, <laughs> but yeah, that it was. Yeah. It, 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 I was juggling between this and my number one, which, to be fair, like I didn't think any of the games I played this year were. Oh my god, amazing! I must, I must admit, as someone who's come into it new, I did not expect for it to become this high for you. Oh, I really, really enjoyed it. I liked it was the characters yeah. that made it. Oh yeah. yeah. And also the fact that the main character has a story has an actual character arc. Well, something well. a lot of games these days <laughs> don't have. So many RPGs they just uh, nah, he's just always great. And it's like, no, no, this character's not always great. He's a yeah, fucking he's, arsehole. He's, he's, either, he's either always great or he's like something who the player could just project yeah. onto. Yeah. Meet meet voiceless protagonist protagonist charm. Exactly. Or me, oh my god, greatest guy in the world, Chow. <laughs> oh, it's funny you say about the silent voiceless protagonist. <laughs> oh yeah. What? So? I mean, yeah. Let's get on to my number two pick. Monster Hunter World. Oh. 
Yeah, uh, you forgot this one came out this year as well, didn't you? I just forget Monster Hunter full stop. I just, <laughs> yeah, I didn't. Mm, I just yeah. didn't play it, so. God. I don't... Damn, you guys. Suck. Right. Um... I'm sorry. <laughs> no, I'm no, sorry. I, just... I didn't play this game, Mister. I don't like Spider Man. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I know. I can. Bitch. I don't. I'm I can't. Big like suicide Squad. No, you're brand. No, you're branded for life, Sam. <laughs> I know. I'm branded for life. I gotta fucking own it at this point. You might. Like, you might as. Don't doesn't like Spider Man. <laughs> No, no, no. Suicide Squad is a great character piece, Josh. You've got to quote him properly. <laughs> Sam, number two. Let's Monster, talk about Monster Hunter. Monster Hunter. <laughs> right, Monster Hunter World. This game is probably the most gorgeous game I've played this year. It rewards learning, and it gives you plenty to do that isn't actual just fucking busy work. Um, frankly, I call it anti-busy work because everything you do um, to like, contribute to how you go about this game the game actually remembers, so the game helps you learn. Like if you're tracking, if you're tracking a greater Jagras, the first thing you find, you'll be finding its tracks. You'll be finding ways it's influenced the environment around you, and that's great the first time because you're learning what the monster does. But the next time you come back to it because you need to hunt it up so you can make more armor out of the fucking thing, the game knows that you know all this and thinks, oh yeah, that that that. Oh, it's gone this way. Great. Learning means I have actually made the game easier for me. Fan fucking tastic. Um, harvesting material sites, uh, crafting essentials, um, all stuff that's old hat to people who've played Monster Hunter for ages like me. Uh, it's just been made easier for the newbies and easier for me who doesn't want to have to fuck around with all this sorts of things. I just felt sort of, with the game, like, I just felt it was just... I didn't enjoy it just for the fact I do like a narrative. Yeah, I... But... <laughs> The one issue I do have is like, right, let's follow this older dragon. So and give it a good what for for minding its own fucking business. It, well, I, I it, right, you're not wrong, Josh. But if we if we just left the giant dragons to their own business, we wouldn't really have a very good monster hunter game. Yeah, you're not hunting monsters, why are you doing? You just yeah, like, like I, I I will confess that the narrative in this is pure tripe. Um, because they're very. Well, I mean, yeah, I mean, being, a, being a, a, a person who's against hunting in general. Yeah, yeah, like I, <laughs> yeah, I, I'm not a huge hunting fan either. I shouldn't like this game. It, it, it's one of those that I thought when I heard about Monster Hunter and so, something like that, I saw more of a sort of like a. I didn't think of oh, we're just going out hunting and making stuff out of these animals. Yeah, yeah, it's and it makes me feel kind of weird and wrong. No. That's yeah, yeah. that's that's fair. Monster Hunter is not an easy series to get into, but this game is probably the easiest way for anyone to get onto playing it. I, for coming into it from other games, it just it did everything right. Not having loading screens in between like different areas of the map that you can fucking see, um, and being able to manipulate those environments as well. We've never been able to do that shit before. Um, pulling like luring luring an Anjanath through. Uh, some kind of tunnel and then caving that shit on top of it. Um, mm. Coming back to the bat, luring a different Anjanath up so it can fight another monster that you're having a lot of trouble with. It'll distract it so you can go heal up. Both are going to do damage to each other. One's going to end up dead so you get cards from that, and the other one's going to end up damaged. It's even unique, like, combat animations that they will fight have when fighting just each other. Um... The fight set pieces between those, the first encounter with Zora Magdaros, where you're fighting this thing the size of a mountain. And are you doing anything to it? Are you fuck? But god damn, is it fun to try. Um, it's, it's a great game series that's never been easier to get into. I've had so much fun on this on my own. Like, it's just... Yeah, because the online's so shit you can't play with your friends. No, I couldn't play with any of my friends because all of you guys quit by the time I got around to try. Um, yeah, but even when me, Reese, and uh, yeah, I was gonna say um, like trying, I remember the uh, issues they had with teaming up. Fair enough, fair enough. I can't comment on that sort of stuff. It didn't ever apply to me. But I got through about eighty percent of the game on my own steam, just from exploring and loving every single environment here. So I've got to say, it. it looks a fa it looks fantastic. It's oh, a yeah. great looking game. Yeah, yeah. Like I, I kind of want to get the PC version just to see how much better it looks. In it's just but... my biggest issue is just that it feels like I'm just over there to kill things. 
Like, yeah. just to hunt and just to... Some yeah, creatures no, I, that I, are minding its own business, I'll go over there and hunt it for my own amusement. I mean, you're minding your own. That's fair. Oh. This isn't going to be the game for you. To I... be fair, Josh, you're minding your own business. It's just that your business is monster hunting. <laughs> yeah, yeah, like... It... I don't know. I don't really know what else to to say. Like, I'm not. I. I. It's not. It's not your bag. I'm not expecting. Oh no, no, no. Yeah. I. I but <laughs> now you can bake the monsters into your bag. Yeah. Exactly. Like, it, it, it's get in there, kill things, and make things out of those things to kill well, people. See, I'm just about, picturing you know, um, monster Far Cry. At least uh, the game gives you a reason for doing, like, you know, killing these things and turning them into your bag. I'm just, just picturing home. Sam as like doing the "See My Vest" song from The Simpsons now. <laughs> I mean, yeah, that is kind of Monster Hunter, frankly. Yeah, um, see, that, like, that's why I don't mind in Far Cry. You're killing these animals and such and turning them into your bags and stuff like that. Because it's uh, through survival. Can I put a right, request yeah. in? Shoot. Sorry, can we, can we stop sitting here talking about the real-life implications of video games while we're talking about just hunting? And just get on with the next game. Yeah, he's right. Yeah, that's so, a fair point. Um, yeah, uh, yeah, that's my number two, Monster Hunter World. All right, Trent. Right, I'm gonna cheat because my number two is two games. Cool. Because okay. Yakuza Six and Kiwami Two. So you didn't end up yeah. choosing between them, then? No. I just oh yeah, you were like, I don't know which one I'm gonna choose. <laughs> no, you I just... was like, you know what? Fuck it, both together because <laughs> I like play. them both equally because they are extensively similar games but on more or less the same engine with a lot of uh, not re well, yeah, a lot of, a couple of reused assets, but it's just overall the stories are vastly different. Yeah. Yeah. Being, I really liked a lot of the emotional sort of payoff and the kind of culmination element that Six had to it, having like played all the other games. And it's like you get to this point, it's like, oh, we're putting your rest to some of these like long running ser like storylines and sub and sub stories and characters. And I was ultimately sad to see it go. And, a pro and oh, the ending for Six, I probably would I would have done differently, but I was still most satisfied with it. And Kiwami Two was. Uh, Retread of probably the best overall best game in the series, but with the sort of same attention to detail the first Kiwami had to it. Oh yeah, they, I've I, I haven't put Kiwami two on my list just because I haven't finished it yet. It's like everything about it's like yeah, everything I loved about Kiwami one and it's back and it's better and it looks so good as well. Yakuza six has the whole like emotional element and it's like ah. Oh, I played, yeah, I played Yakuza 0, I played Yakuza 1, and then Kiwami, and then went to Yakuza Kiwami 2, and it's just so... It feels like a different game. I mean, yeah, that's the kind of jump you had from 1 to 2. Yeah, and it just uh, felt good. It just looked good. What a, and, yeah, definitely going to be... And my... not having played the original Yakuza 2, uh, Kiwami 2 just feels so good. But I love the story. I love the fact that I'm in the, like, you know, the story, the characters, yeah. the mini games. Without spoiling any uh, of what happens in 6 and 2, they're both great games for vastly different reasons. If I had to say between the two of them, I think 2 is the overall better game, but 6 has too much sort of uh, subject, like subjective emotional strength for it to really be tossed aside like that. So I'm Fair just going to say, Plus them both together, play the whole series. <laughs> yeah. uh, Two Tigers, uh, you fight the Tigers. We can, we can allow that cheat. They're yeah. also, like, fundamentally very similar games. It's just a slight change in... It's just a change in environments, mostly, and then the cutscenes. Everything else is, like, very similar combat systems, very similar overall mechanics. Uh, very very much the same mouthful of Cosmic Kiryu never killed anyone apart from that person he stabbed. Apart from that person he punched a knife through their uh, stomach. Apart from that guy he threw off like a building. I'm sorry, those 12 guys who threw off a building. Fuck. Apart from that guy he hit in the face, he shotgun in the face. <laughs> yeah, I could go on. Like, there's whole compilations of Cosmic Kiryu never killed anyone. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, technically the, the, the box shot killed them. Technically the ground killed them. <laughs> No, no, no. I didn't kill anyone. I murdered them. Yeah. So, yeah. It's hard on the list, and just play the whole, theory, play the whole series. It's all on PS4 now. Cool. I'm looking forward to playing uh, Kiwami 1. I've got it downloaded, ready to play at some point. We all do. <laughs> yeah. Alright, my number two, then. 
Uh, might come as a shock that it's at number two and not number one, but it's Super Smash Bros. Ultimate. That is a surprise. Yeah, it's not, it's not my number one game of the year. But I have a hell of a lot more positive things to say about it than everyone else seems to. I'll get the first shit out of the way. I barely played like World of Light. It was boring. I don't give a shit. There you go. Um, I appreciate spirits in the sense that they're basically just trophies, but they can have more of them because they only need to get a nice high quality picture of an art rather than rendering an entire 3D model, uh, which takes a fuck ton more time. Uh, so you know what? Yeah, I can respect that. They've, they included characters from all corners of Nintendo's history that most of the people playing do not even know like 40% of the fucking spirits because why would they Yeah. Uh, did you know that the Wario Land games had a princess because I sure fucking didn't <laughs> um, but no I don't care about most of that stuff the single player stuff the uh, like arcade whatever you want to call it where you go through like each character's yeah. story was done better than pretty much every other Smash Brothers I think agreed like, yeah, it's kind of hard to disagree with that. Like, they actually really thought about who they're fighting, how they're fighting. There were one or two disappointments where it's just like, and now it's Master Hand and Crazy Hand. It's like, yeah, all right. But aside from that, I, I thought it was uh, really well done. Um, the actual playing of the game, I think, is by far and large the best in the entire series. Um, and I guess me saying that, coming from Brawl being my favorite Smash Brothers, it still is. Um, because it's kind of hard to top the uh, Subspace Emissary, really. You can't... Oh, yeah. I mean, you could top it if you wanted to try World of Light, maybe. No? Okay. Well, we'll touch that. Yeah. <laughs> well, that because they got pissed about the... Wasn't it that the Subspace Emissary got leaked and that pissed them off? Yeah. Oh, yeah. It's entirely what That's happened. So, basically thanks, why you're thanks, get it. leakers, you bastards. <laughs> um, but the actual, like, the mechanics of the game, how fast it is, how... Much honestly, much easier it is to play than something like melee. Like melee has a lot of fast tech choices to it, but you, I feel like you can do a lot of the same stuff you could in melee, but it's a lot easier. It's actually into the game. It's not like you got to learn wave dashing and all this nonsense. Um, just the fights are always fluent. Uh, even though it's so fast paced, you never lose your character, and I have no idea how they manage that. Like they don't even have coloured outlines on them anymore and I still can somehow manage to keep track of my character the entire time I'm playing. I've never had that in any fighting game that's that fast, ever. I always lose them. Or just any game that's that fast. Um, I do have one kind of big issue, which is really stopping it from being the top game and it's the single most important thing, probably. The online fucking sucks. Yeah, it does. Yeah, it does. I like... Yeah. It's it's not hard to just give us a lobby, let us choose how we fight each other, and then let us fight each other, right? It shouldn't be hard. They've done it in the past. Smash Wii U's online was fine. It wasn't the best, but it was fine. You know what sucked? Splatoon's original online. That was fucking garbage. How about we don't give us basically that, but in Smash Bros. Ultimate? No? And I don't like to leave it on a downer because I honestly think Ultimate is the ultimate form of Smash Brothers in actually playing it. Like, the characters they've added, you've got everyone back. Like, the mechanics of the game is perfect. But just those little quality of life things all are sort of just not there. If they just completely rehauled the online, which probably would be easy, uh, it would probably be my number one game of the year and, like, in my top ten favourite games of all time, possibly. Um, but... No, it's not even in, like, my top. It's it's yeah, probably my second favourite Smash Brothers, I guess. But, you know, only just. <laughs> it's right, good, though. So. It's a very good game. If you just want to play Smash Brothers for good Smash Brothers, you, know, you just want to play fun games against your friends, uh, there's a co whole bunch of cool new modes when you're playing offline with friends, which mm. I haven't got to play against anyone that isn't a CPU because we're bad at timekeeping and none of it, we didn't try it at all at New Year's Eve, which kind of sucked. Yeah, but they're really cool. I like the Smashdown where you go through the whole roster of the game. I, that's such yeah, a cool I've concept. I really want to, to play Smashdown. I know, I, and like the three v threes and five v fives, stuff like that. They used to do that in uh, Tekken Tag. Always just play that. I didn't touch the other modes in Tekken Tag. I was like, no, we're just gonna play the ones where you choose eight characters and you just fight them off against each other. So yeah. I love that. Um, there's a lot of cool stuff. I just wish the online was better. Honestly, I don't care about the story of light. If it's good, it's bad. Whatever. It's there. It's fun to play sometimes. It's just. It's an added. It's bonus, you know. Just please change the online. Sakurai, please. I'll never ask you for anything again. I've never asked you for anything in the past. Just please fix the online. Just put Luigi in the game full time. He is in the game. You don't need him. 
Alright, so we are on to our number one, our favourite games of 2018. Josh, would you like yeah. to start? Uh, basically, this is going to be the shortest of Sweet. anything said tonight. Basically, it was Spider-Man. Because yeah. Spider-Man is one of the best characters in Marvel. I mean, uh, well, yeah, well, we, we don't even need to go there. Just, just, you think you said enough? <laughs> Shane, yeah, is yours going to be exactly the same? No. He says with his Spider-Man logo. <laughs> <It's just disgusting. laughs> yeah, right. <laughs> I mean, should we just like cut the middleman and I'll just put come out here and just take over Josh's spot? Yeah, you two just uh, talk about Spider-Man for a while. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> right. This game, this game is basically perfect. The swinging mechanics are fucking great and uh, so. I'll, I will. I'll frame it with like this. The game came out in September, right? Yeah. And like, still every time, like even. Like, not right now, but a lot of times I've been talking to people or I've been doing other things. I will just brute up Spider Man. I will just swing around New York and do nothing else. Yeah. Yeah. Thank you. Yeah. I've like done every that. single way. I've sort of, we did a whole podcast where I talked about mechanic, about uh, sandbox mechanics and movement yeah. and how Spider Man had an unfair advantage because its web swing was inherently uh, great. Mm. Um, so the thing with Spider Man is it's beyond just web swinging, like, every single movement option in the game is fluid uh it's flawless like there are f stunts you can perform that make you just like i mean everyone said it but it makes you feel like spider-man but it just looks impressive like you could be fucking around and you're still like pulling off shit that just like wow like, uh, <clears throat> um the cat the, the entire like world the way the world is set up is great uh the fact you're, you're following a spider-man who's been around the block he's done all this shit again before like it's not just the starting gears of peter parker i also like the fact that there's so many characters that you already know and yet they still feel new but they uh, also feel so but also everything feels more sort of realistic like the relationship between mary jane and peter for instance or uh, or with his aunt they feel so real I it mean, feels like a natural problem. No, it does feel like a natural if problem. If I had one complaint, it's that Mary Jane should not be in the game. No, I but, really hate but, her in this game. No, but it feels like an actual relationship. Feels like a really uh, abusive relationship, yes. To be fair, I've been in relationships like that, but to be fair... It doesn't make it right. <laughs> I feel like we're losing track here. But, so, yes, like on a small sort of movement, uh, mechanic-wise, it's a fantastic game, like... That in, and of a, that in and of itself would probably beat out everything, but it's that on top of like heralding one of the greatest fictional characters ever made, and basically doing what Arkham did, which is highlight all of which is highlight not from one particular source, but from many many sources, and interpretations and adaptations of what makes this character so good and long lasting. Mm, definitely. Beyond like, it's not just like oh this is it's not just like greatest hit Spider Man. It's like ah uh, it's like everything and the plethora of suits and costumes and gadgets and uh, all like references yeah, to past it's not things. Even, yeah, it's not even like you know. I could have done without like yeah, could have done without like five of the spider armors though. Oh yeah, yeah that but... was a bit that was a bit fucking egregious. But the fact that they keep on adding free content, like they literally just like a couple of days ago released a con released an update that gave you. Uh, bombastic Bagman and Future Foundation spider suits for free. They gave you the Sam Raimi Spider-Man movie suit for free. Oh shit! Yeah. Uh, <clears throat> to yeah. be fair, like plus also like the DLC it's, that was uh, fun to play as well. As yes. soon as the DLC came out, it's just like, do you know what? I want to go back to New York and swing around again. There was a maximum. Yeah, the DLC also. It didn't feel cheap. It didn't feel necessarily tacked on. It felt natural. It felt. Uh, it felt like something that would have happened after the game. Yeah, I, I could. So it's one of those that Spider Man would be doing. It didn't feel like it was something that could, would have been in like the middle of the game. No, yeah, yeah, that's right. Like, that was one uh, criticism I thought I would be having. Like, you know, one of those things that like, hmm, they, they've already announced the DLC, but the DLC feels like something. Yeah, this is after uh, everything. It's a natural and... continuation. So I. I it's almost like a side story. Like, you know, it's just like, right, okay, all of that's happened. Oh, great, something else has happened now, for fuck's sake. It mm. feels like something that would be like, oh, we've just finished that event in a comic book. 
here's this comic book. Oh, so here's what's happening with Black Cat and all that. Even even beyond that, like when you get to the pure like basics of the mechanics of combat and how in depth that is, and the sheer variety. Oh, it's of... so smooth as well. It's so like, smooth. There's like... so many different things, and the progress level progression as well actually feels. You have three basic. You have like four basic moves you do in combat, and it's all about the way in which you chain every single one of those abilities and items and gadgets together, alongside your basic punch and kick combos to like really make it so combat is just inherently fun in a way that like I feel Arkham the Arkham games could never actually achieve in terms of making it so. There's a reason to like use gadgets mid combat, or there's a reason to use. The extra ability, like it actually does utilize a lot of Spider-Man's inherent like abilities and mechanics that have never that have only sort of been r- roughly attempted in past games, just down to the way you know the tech works. I did also like some of the um, uh, stealth, not obviously the forced ones, you know, the Mary Jane. Oh, you mean the predator, or... like the predator challenges where you're like darting around an area and webbing up bad guys without them noticing. Yeah, I really enjoyed that so much. There's also a lot of great variety in terms of bo- in terms of enemy types, and mm. have, each enemy has and like. You've got to figure different... out how to uh, take them down. Uh, how you're going. Uh, whether to uh, take them out first or whether to leave them generally take out the big guys first My, um, the only thing I could ever cri- I can really criticise beyond just generally hating Mary Jane in this game is the soundtrack is extremely generic oh yeah it mm. just sa- it sounds like what I would call Avengers music it's like very kind of yes it's an epic epic orchestral score I would have preferred if they'd have used like I would have preferred like renditions of older themes like the Danny Elfman theme for the Raimi movies or Spectacular Spider-Man song should have been in there just saying yeah it's very much you can hear in the background the same song and yeah so it's like the soundtrack is serviceable but nothing spectacular and I would have very much loved if every if I could say every aspect of this game was perfect but there are just two flaws, which is one, Mary Jane being garbage, and two, the soundtrack is completely forgettable. Beyond that, perfect. Fair enough. Fuck you. Fuck you. I agreed with everything you said. <laughs> yeah, I know, but fuck you anyway. <laughs> Spider-Man is the best. <laughs> yeah, basically. Okay. Spider-Man, is, Spider-Man is a great character piece. Uh, okay. All right, I'm done. <laughs> yeah, yeah you, yeah, you are done. For right. now. <laughs> okay, well that's uh, that's Josh and Train done. So I think it's me next. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Surprise okay. us with your surprise that didn't surprise us. Uh, yeah. My top game of the year is World Ends with You Final Remix. Hey, um, surprise! Yeah, it's not surprising any of you. It's been long established that World Ends with You is my favorite game of all time. Um, I don't. I don't really know what what I can say to not surprising you, but why it is. Like, this would be basically if Persona 4 came out on the PS4 again and I played it again with some new things and basically this would be what I'd be doing. Well, here, here's the cool. thing. Persona 4 came out around the same time as this did originally um, and a lot of people I've talked to, Persona 4 was that kind of game that kind of opened them up to more cerebral storytelling. This was kind of that game for me um, and frankly when this game first came out, like you know, the introduction to Neku, it's almost cartoonish at this point. Just this antisocial little twat of a main character. Um, Which is practically my nerds. Well, yeah, but that's the thing. When I started playing that game, that kind of was me. You know, I I was very, very closed off from people. I, I isolated myself. I didn't really... Um, there was only like a handful of people who, who I really opened up to or considered, like, worth keeping in my life, one of which, I, you know, is in this call right now. Hello. So uh, basically not much has changed. <laughs> yeah, let me keep talking. Um, <laughs> so, you, know, uh, you know, and Neku's character development, I got to the end of that game 10 years ago, sat in my bed, staying up at like 2 o'clock in the morning, and I just realised that, holy shit, I can't, I can't keep being that guy. You know, th- this guy's character development spurred on my character development. Mm. Oh, and... that's not to blame, is it? <laughs> <laughs> oh, you're such dickheads. Right, uh, but... And, yeah, this game's always going to... 
this game is always going to resonate with me a lot more because of that. I acknowledge that. But at the same time, it's a story of character development unlike any I've ever played. The battle system is unlike anything I've ever experienced. You can customize how you fight to a ridiculous degree. The aesthetic of this game is so thick, you can cut it with a knife. Like, just the way things look. The enemies in it, the noise, these these weird and wonderful animals that have just spawned from the collective mashing of the human unconscious of these animals where just bits of them are replaced with tribal tattoos. It's such a simple idea, and it works so well. It looks amazing. The soundtrack is amazing. It is, And as Yuki said, you can switch back to the old one if you're really, really hankering for it. Aside from one song, the, the end credit song from the original game isn't in this one. Oh, really? And I don't know. Yeah, That's Lullaby weird. for You isn't in this. And I hate that, that not because that song makes me cry. <laughs> it's, it's, just the, it's the cherry on top of a really emotional ending, at least for me. But... See, I'm I'm gonna say like I wasn't a fan. I, I'm not a great fan of like you know the soundtrack. <gasps> oh. No, 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 no. I'll I let him finish. I'm gonna let him finish. Yeah, let him finish. <laughs> Put down your torches and pitchforks. Save them for no, later. It, it's nothing like you know. Oh my god, the soundtrack sucks. Yeah. It's more. It, it, the soundtrack was just there. I never felt moved by the soundtrack. I never felt, oh, this is actually quite catchy. It was just there. Yeah, no. The thing is, that is an entirely fair point, because the soundtrack is a very, very, very eclectic mix of different genres mixed with what Japan thinks gang gang style music sounds like. Yeah, and that's the kind of music I don't like. Which is absolutely fair. Yeah, so that's probably why I don't, I didn't like the soundtrack. Yeah. Just because it's not the music I listen to. That's absolutely fair. It's not music I really tend to listen to either. The reason why I like it is because it contributes to the whole feel of the game, the aesthetic of it. Um, it all it all fits together perfectly. It just it it works. I don't know how it works because it is everywhere at once, but it works. It's not Yoko Shin- Shinomura and her violins, is what you're saying. It's yeah, exactly. <laughs> Um, yeah, when they I asked her, like, Yoko, worked. for this or, for this score, can you please bring an instrument that's not a violin? And she said no. <laughs> Violins. I mean, he's not wrong, but you know, we still love Yoko. Thing, oh, uh, she's a fantastic composer. She, she is. loves violins. She does. One thing I think, like, it could have worked a little bit better if it worked with music. Like, everything seemed to be done around music, like the noise, uh, the way he always wears his headphones and such like that. Oh, music is hugely prominent theme. It's literally every other character except Neku called, named after a musical element. Not quite. Well, like, beat and rhyme at least. Beat and rhyme at least, but yeah, that's... Yeah, but it's one of those, like, you know, uh, they could have incorporated the music into... uh, Instead of, like, you know, um, uh, pins or whatever... They could have changed it to sort of something like a cassette or a CD or something like that. I think well, the no, game you're it... looking for is Akaba's Beat, an entire yes. RPG system built around the music. One, he is right. Two, the pins are vitally important as well because that's another part of oh, no, the no, 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 no. message of this no, game. No, 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 I do understand that. I do understand that. But uh, like you know, uh, pins are still like all the fashion and such like that, and how it changes. Well, they kind of around are, that actually. area. Well. But, yeah. But uh, but so can music. Music changes uh, with fashion and such like that. Like pop is huge right now. Oh, but in course. the 80s it was rock, and it uh, and in the 60s like rock and roll, well, and such it's... like that. And that could uh, that could be huge as well. Like using music in yeah, that no. way. And that's why I feel there's a bit of a missed trick with it a little bit. I I, I is that Josh? I do see what you're saying. But the thing is, like uh, the the. The kind of beauty of all of two of these elements is that they combine together because it's all reinforcing the theme of individuality, of no, finding yeah. your own style, of finding what works for you, of uh, not being afraid to stand out from the crowd to be yourself. Um, and that's kind of why there is such an eclectic mix. You know, the clothing system, the fucking... Every single difference you can get, all the different pins, it's all about oh, no, finding no, no, your no, own yeah. group. That's not, that's not what I'm... Uh... What I would no, like no. to see I... is just that, uh, um, like, you know, uh, instead of just having, uh, you could have, like, you know, instead of just, uh, I'm trying to figure out what I'm trying to say, uh, yeah. instead of uh, just, like, this music all being in there, but having your own mix to change 
how you the play style as well as all yeah. of this. No, because, no, no. You know, I, yeah, I get you. I get you. Yeah, having like you know setting out your own uh, soundtrack by having all of these musical tracks in there. I I do think it's kind of weird. You can't compose like a battle play. Like that's one yeah, thing I would have liked you know, to add. Like, like you know, okay, that I want rock. If I'm facing someone like this, I want pop if I'm playing like this, I want J-pop if I'm playing like this. I really thought there was a system in the game where you could change the music at literally every single No, no, no. You, what you can do is you can change the music that plays in the menu. Oh. Uh, you, you, uh, the stuff you get during battle is based on the CDs you own, but you have no real control over it, unless you're fighting a specific boss, in which case it will play the song that is most specific to them. Like if you fight B, That's you'll, fair play, you'll hear Tatakai, etc. I got to say, yeah, I yeah, don't so the soundtrack so much, but I know I think that would have raised it a bit further, like that would have been made it my number one, because then it would have been individuality, because a lot of people do uh, find music to be their thing that set, that defines them a little bit. Absolutely fair point. Um, but, but again, I, yeah. I agree with a lot of what you're saying, just the soundtrack yeah. is the mist... End of the day, it's end the, of the day, it, all the trick. That's it. At the end of the day, all this game had to do was re-release, and it was going to be, of course, it was. But they went even further. They ironed out a lot of what it is. They made it enjoyable on a single screen. They added new post-game content, which I never thought we'd fucking get. New details on a cliffhanger from the iOS version, which was came out about seven fucking years ago. Other details I really want to talk about, but I can't because it spoil things. Yes, it's as close. It is as close as perfect to perfect as a remix and a re-release is ever going to get. And it's the most fun I had playing a game this year. Even ignoring every other reason I love it. It is the most fun I had. I am so happy this exists. Oh yeah, right. It's one of those that I am... It's one of those games that I will go back to. Yeah, no, it just... That's that's why... Because all the other games that I don't think I'm... I probably, apart from Smash, I probably won't go back to a lot of the games I've put on this list. Yeah. But The World Ends With You, Spider-Man, I will go back to. Oh, absolutely. I never left Spider-Man. Yeah, but that's... That's that's all I got. Like, I could gush about this for years, but I don't want to. (laughs) Fair enough. Well, I guess it's time for the only person who seems to have a surprising number one. I guess everyone else is like kind of. Yeah, I'm, I'm very curious about this. I, which is weird because I think every year so far I've been the single most predictable person on these lists. Yeah. He comes out with Fallout 17. Ah, so you know it all along. It was fun. No, I didn't. No. Uh, Deltarune is my number one. You say, I was actually thinking, you know, the fact that Super Smash Bros. wasn't his number one. The only other game I could think of was Deltarune. Yeah, well... So uh, yeah. Exactly now, now, now that it's mentioned, there was a suspicious lack of Deltarune on this list. Yeah, well, to yeah, be I fair, uh, yeah. if you remember, two years ago, I didn't put Pokemon Uranium on my list. Oh, because... uh, Deltarune Chapter 1 will be a free download on Nintendo Switch today. Yeah, we well, you know, we watched the Direct. Yes. We, can't, we sort of regretted it, but we did. <laughs> Hashtag slow watch. Um, anyway, <laughs> yeah, so yeah, to be fair, I didn't watch it. I was just you know, I know. Just, yeah. Del- well, yeah. Delta Rune, the thing that I'm sitting here talking about, um, yeah. had a lot of a lot a lot to live up to. Undertale is easily, by far and large, one of my favourite games of all time. Easily like top five video games that have ever existed. Um, I adore everything about it. So when it came to Delta Rune, I just thought, what are they going to do? If is it a sequel? Is it a prequel? Like, could kind of work. Uh, but it's neither. It's like a sort of not set. It's like a lot of these characters you know, but they're we put them in a different setting. So instead of doing like a this is a continuation of this thing that you like or a prequel or whatever, which I'm not sure would have really worked at all. Probably um, not it's for like Undertale. imagine these characters, or at least characters who are very similar to these characters and have the same name, and plop here you go. They're in a new, completely different, <laughs> unique world, uh, and a lot of the a lot of the themes and styles are sort of there. But I feel like it worked better having played the first game. It's like, ah, you come to expect this thing because Undertale. But actually, fuck you, I don't give a shit. Uh, it basically, it, it's almost like, I guess some people could look at it and saying it's basically pissing on Undertale. And it's like, yeah, you know what? You like that thing? Well, we don't care. We're doing our own thing. But I think oh, it kind the of... Lost Jedi of Undertale, gotcha. Oh boy. <laughs> but unlike that, it's actually completely respectful and not just you know actually throwing it out of the window. It's not saying Undertale didn't happen, it's saying, here's a different thing that could have happened with these characters. You know, here's a different set of stories, a different scenario, a different complete, you know, why things work in this way. And it's it's one of those things where, because, oh, and we only have the episode one of it, 
Uh, so we have no resolutions of any story. It's not, you know, we don't know what's going on. But it's kind of, it's fun to like sit there and think, right, what could be happening? What, what you know, what possibilities are they, you know, what stories are they trying to tell here? Because there's a lot of different directions you can take it. Uh, which obviously Undertale had sort of the same thing. By the end of it, people were like, you know, a lot of people got different themes out of it. And I think a game that can give different, like, meanings to different people uh, is a very powerful written story. Oh, yeah. You can't do that much with what is basically an extended demo. Uh, you know, it's a three-hour game. It's not super difficult. It didn't it didn't super challenge anything. It just basically gave us an introduction to what we will be getting at some point in the future. Um, mm. And frankly, I'm extremely excited for it. The one thing I was super not looking forward to, to anything coming out of Undertale, was I thought, whatever they do, they're not going to make me love the characters that I loved in Undertale anywhere near as much. And you know what? They fucking one up themselves because I actually prefer every single character in Deltarune than I did to the ones in Undertale, and I never expected that to happen in a billion years. That's so, that is that is a lot for a three-hour demo. It really, really is. And you know, they uh, aside from like Sans and maybe Papyrus, I feel like they fleshed out the characters in Deltarune way more than they ever fleshed out anyone in Undertale. The whole I game. think that's why. Again, I didn't like. Undertale as much. Josh, you don't. Just we, 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 the characters. We, we know we're not here to talk about Undertale, so we'll just. No, I know, but we'll, yeah. we'll leave so that. Maybe I might actually like Delta Ring. You you might do. I mean, it's free. Just try it. Why not? Yeah, so I'll give it a try. Yeah, like might as well. you know, it, I, it's one of those things where I think you might get a bit more out if you have played Undertale, but even if you hadn't, it's still fun. It's a fun game with fun characters, so you're. I, I recommend everyone try it because yes, it came out today or what, but probably will be yesterday for you guys watching this for free on the Switch. I mean, it's already for free on PC. You can just download it wherever, whenever. Anyway, well, yesterday, uh, probably last year. Maybe. While you're there, mate. <laughs> while you're there, make sure to get Tetris Battle Royale, our number one game for next year. I have not even bothered. <laughs> I mean, but I uh, yeah, one so it's definitely. I don't even think of one game. It's definitely gonna be on the list next year. And another one I'm under completely undecided on. So I'm not sure how much I actually hate it or not. Well, because of the ending. Uh, yeah. <laughs> well, we're not here to discuss spoilers for potent for games that people might not have played, considering that only came out a month ago. So really I ending. think it's time to do our tally, which yes. I already know what the top game is. So uh... Uh, actually, I don't think you do. Okay. Um, okay. Let's go from. Are we, where are we going? Do it go from ten. Or five, uh, or I mean, uh, it's not in order. Uh, no, no, I put it in order. Yeah, trains didn't. put it in order. So no, I didn't. I put no, it he in hasn't. Order. All right, the two top. I'll put it this way: the two top games are Spider Man and uh, The World Ends with You with uh, joint first place. I didn't That's expect cool. The World Ends with You to be joint with Spider Man. I thought it would be like maybe one or two higher, but fair enough. No, nope, it's joint twenty-seven. It, it's joint, yeah. Holy shit! By my count, which was give, which was basically reversed. So ten uh, being number ten got you one point. Yeah, and number yeah. one got you ten points, so yeah. it was Sam's like number. F it got seven points from Sam, and then twenty points from me and Josh combined. So yeah. <laughs> uh, then Super Smash Bros. eats in at uh, third place with twenty five. Honestly, yeah, surprised it's that, anywhere yeah, near that high. I think had we bought that up. I think. <laughs> and then uh, next up, uh, Soul Calibur Six comes in at six with sixteen points. Okay, making yeah. that number four, and then. Delta Rune uh, and... Delta Rune and Fighters. Oh, no, uh, Spyro Reignited at 11. Yeah, that. Spyro Reignited comes in at 11. And then Delta Rune and Fighters share next spot with 10 each. Go Delta Rune. <laughs> and then Monster Hunter and Yakuza uh, have 9. And then it's just kind of, yeah, everything else is... Yeah. Mostly, is... Almost everything else only ever had, like, one vote, if you will. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, that kind of says something about this year, that all of us had a lot of really, like, unique picks... Yeah, I mean, there were three games that were on that were on. Uh, well, there were two games that were on three lists, and one game was on all four lists. Yeah, which we yeah. kind of already knew actually going we into did. this, quite obviously. <laughs> yeah. yeah, we knew they were the top we, three. We did, but and um, yeah, like that kind of explains the disparity in like why they are quite as high as they are. Yeah, but like well, that's always going to be with how the numbering system works. But I can't think of any fairer way to do it. No, I don't no, think no, it's no, the fairest way. You know, it would feel stupid that like. Uh, Game uh, a game that was be like top one for three for like two people would lose out to a game that was number ten for three people, for instance. Otherwise, yeah, yeah no, that's fair. Again, yeah, no, I'm, I'm, I'm not, I'm not objecting to the system the way we do it. I just like how 
I just like that this has shown kind of how wide 2018's breadth was in terms of really good video games. If I had to make a point and we had to declare one single winner, I would like to vote for Spider-Man beyond personal bias on yeah, the basis yeah. that The World Ends With You is ultimately a re-release. i got to be honest, um, I also want to put my vote in for Spider-Man anyway, so... No, oh, okay. I... So it no, doesn't even yet. matter? <laughs> I'm not disputing it's a great game, Sam. No, 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 no. Like, my his thing, argument his thing. is... I'm going to agree with you. Yeah, okay. I was going to say, I'm pretty sure Sam would agree too. I think we all agree that Spider-Man was the game of 2018. I didn't have it on my list. I didn't play it. That's why. Honestly, if I did, pretty sure it would be on my list because I'm pretty sure I would enjoy it. All yeah. right, so our collective game of the year is Spider-Man with The World Ends of You as the closest second you could possibly get. Yeah. Basically only gumming that because of a technicality, I would say. Yeah. That's totally yeah. fair. Yeah. And yeah. then third is Super Smash Bros. and so on and so forth. Like the fact that uh, the world ends with you was in three top fives. Yeah, basically, it was just that Spider Man. It, well, it, had... it was in three top threes. Yeah. It was basically yeah. just that Spider Man had two top one places that kept it that kept in the running, really. And it, to uh, totally fair. Like again, it was on Sam's list. If I had played it, I'm pretty sure it would have been on my list. Well, it would have been. It was better than whatever I talked about for number ten in the end. I can't even remember. Fire Emblem Heroes. No, no, no. I <laughs> Wait, Fire Emblem Heroes came out what? 20... It came out last year. I just talked about the fact that it had extra content this year. It was between yeah. that or talking about Fortnite or a really shit free game that I didn't like. Yeah. Yeah. Like, yeah. Like it, it, it was nice that everyone was more positive this year. Yeah. I got to say, nine of the games on my list. Well, eight of the games on my list I really liked. Pokemon Let's Go was okay, and then it was only my tenth game that I was like, well. There were quite a few games so, I wanted to get this year. Yeah, a lot of you spoke about a lot of the games. I was like, hmm, I might give that a try. I might give that I a would try. highly recommend Into the Breach just as, like, a, not even beyond just because it was on my list, but just because it's, like, it's very, um, it's not, nothing else quite like it, and it's great for, like, the Switch or PC. Yeah. I've, yeah. Seen, I've seen some gameplay of it. It does look quite cool. I don't think it's my cup of tea, but I think I could probably watch someone playing that and that'd be all right i think as i said i think it's just because there's nothing really comparable to it at the moment yeah. i i do really like my tactical rpgs so i'm gonna give it a look i mean i guess the closest would be super robot was but this is even more like based around tactics because even like board position also matters mm. i guess it's like chess but with robots and <laughs> bugs really sounds like your so, kind of game <laughs> awesome chess but yes hmm. All right. Well, so that was so that was it for um, the original um, Fallout's. You had robots. You had bugs. I mean, you still have bugs in Fallout. In today's Fallout, <laughs> it's just a different kind of bugs. <laughs> <laughs> and you would argue that you still have robots. They're just, you know, the CEO. <laughs> <laughs> Um, there's never too many shots to take at that game well um, now that's it for our 2018 planet cast thank you everyone who came along yeah. and listened uh none of you were surprised at our top three games and if you were you don't know us <laughs> I mean, and look, yeah and uh thank you for watching this on the first day it came out in 2020 uh, Josh has no faith in me. I cannot think of a single time that I've ever recorded a video and then not uploaded it when I said I would. So I don't know why you so little faith in me. It's not like I'm late for turning up to a stream or something. In that case, yeah, have no faith in me. I'm terrible. <laughs> yeah, it's hard for him to turn up to his own fucking YouTube channel where he decides when he turns up. Yeah, and I, I mean, it's not like there's much editing to do. I might slap on a picture of the... The games, well, you guys will know who's just watched this if I did that or not. I might not have done. It might have just been this space background that is my Twitch background. And then I will probably end up editing it and again and re-uploading it. <laughs> that would be stolen oh. content, Josh. I was going to say, that's just admitting to stealing content. That's rare. right. So everyone here uh, heard that or we got that on, on the recording before I start it good? Okay. <laughs> maybe you can half ask the call. It. Has me and Yuki have been talking. I mean that, me. yeah, sure, but why games. would you upload this again if I've already uploaded it? It's done. <laughs> it's it's to make it better. It's transformative, Yuki. It's covered by fair use. Oh, yeah. Yeah. I transformed it by stealing someone else's pictures and putting it on this person's video that I, mean, I also stole. <laughs> I mean, Yuki, that's how YouTube, that's how YouTube works. Nah, you're right. That's he's why right. you're not a famous YouTuber. He's right, he's right, you know. He's right. Thank you all for watching uh, anyway, and uh, we will see you next year, probably. Because I doubt we'll be another video between now and then. <laughs> I mean... Unless it's one of his stream videos. Yeah. Uh, maybe. Um, Probably. Uh, almost definitely not. Goodbye. No, Bye, no, everybody. No. Fuck you, Sam. Bye. <laughs> Fuck you, train.